Good evening and welcome to the Committee of the Whole meeting for March 21st, 2022. Uh, you'll notice that President Burton isn't here tonight, so you have to put up with me for a little while. Um, as, uh, as we know, this is, uh, as the Committee of the Whole meeting, items that are on the agenda tonight have uh, probably been brought to the Board's uh, attention, at least at our study session. And if you're really looking for the nitty gritty and to dig into the questions, this is the meeting that you want to, uh, to watch. So uh, if you want to follow along our agenda tonight, we have agendas outside of the door to the right. If you are watching from home, you can go to our website, uh, livoniapublicschools.org, highlight over the uh, board information tab, and you'll be able to follow along with our agenda. Uh, we do have a couple of presentations tonight, uh, so it should be somewhat entertaining. It would be very informational. <laughs> and uh, That's our goal. <laughs> that's our goal. Uh, so uh, we will go ahead and uh, get on with our meeting. And uh, our first item is audience communication. I do not have any blue slips. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to uh, address the board tonight? Seeing that, we'll move on to item number two, our Committee of the Whole. And uh, uh, President, uh, <laughs> Superintendent Oquist, do you have any uh, items? I don't have any on the agenda. I do not. All righty, then we'll move to item three, our building and site. And I will turn it over to Mr. Centers. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. We have uh, several exciting items this evening, the first of which is Project One, LMC presentation with French and Associates. It's substantial. Their production. It's exciting already. You're on the proof so list. You can. So you're on the proof list. You can. Oh dear! Wow, this is lovely. I gotta push my plate back. Yeah, I'm like getting stuck. Oh, yeah. Thank you. The reason we're, we decided to, to, to do the printouts for you is, is the way that we're configured in the smaller TV, we want you to have the opportunity to see it um, pretty well. I think people at home or those who watch it on YouTube are actually going to have a little better chance of seeing it depending on your screen because mm -hmm. you're going to be up close and, and you'll be a little bit further away. So, um, I got some of these here. Mr. Francis, are you going to get us going on this first? Item? Yeah, yes, okay. I am. Thank you. <laughs> Take the absent minded professor all of a sudden. Conley <laughs> 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 leaves and everything goes into the wastebasket. Okay, well, this evening, actually, uh, very exciting. We have a couple of presentations for the board and for the community. We're going to start, uh, letter A is Project One LMC presentation with French, which is probably a little light on the information. Uh, LMC is one of the big items we're doing in our Project One uh, renovations with the bond. We have five buildings we're, we're going to be touching this summer. And we actually have um, Amy Neckhart and Katie Matevska from French Associates that I want to bring over uh, and, and have them come up to the table with us. They're going to walk you and the community through the presentation that I handed you. It's a PowerPoint. Uh, there's quite a bit of, of information in there with regard to each building. And then we've got a couple of specific um, buildings. We have a Randolph LMC and the Emerson LMC that they're going to really hone in on and do some virtual um, pictures and some 360s of those areas at the end as well. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Amy and Katie. Uh, Katie's probably familiar to many of you. And I have uh, my, my friend over here, Brian Weber. He, I, sorry, Brian, I missed you there for a second. From Plant Man Cressa, who is always with us uh, for many of these topics. Plant Man Cressa, owner's representative, and working side by side with LPS on the 2021 bond initiative. Uh, at this point, Katie, Amy, I think I'm just going to let you take it away. Sure. Uh, I'll just say good evening to everybody. I hope you have a, a good evening. Outside is nice, it's not that cold, so we can enjoy a little bit. And also I wanted to say that all of us fr from French are very excited that we can continue working here, so thank you very much for that. We do appreciate it. 
So we can start with image. You want to start? Yes. Yep. How do I get the? You can switch over to the present. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna. That's yours. Yeah. You can start. So just following up, we did have uh, French at one of our meetings in December give us a, a brief overview during the design development process. We were still scrambling to get um, all the documents ready. So this is more of a continuation, like Phil said, to kind of capture some of the spaces that are still being developed and grasp the full picture of, of what we're um, renovating or building in this in this project one for 2022. Um, it is smaller font here, but we just want to give a show some progress of where we become to date. Um, we did have a bid pack two at the last board meeting we were at. That was for project one. Um, just wanted to clarify that those contracts are currently being um, issued after the board award. Those are in progress. We will have a couple more bid packages later in this meeting um, that will be a separate award, separate round of issuance of contracts. So this screen is just showing we have wheels in motion in the background, also highlighting that because we had some rebids, that we're going to um, replicate some of the processes following this board meeting on the fourth on the board. Just so the board knows, there's a couple of slides at the front and maybe one or two at the back end that's not in your hard copy. We printed this out the other day and, and Plan Rant had, had added a couple just, just to, to, to move the, the community along as to, to show those bullets that you're seeing, but we'll catch up here in a moment. Okay, so we're gonna start with uh, the renovation first, and this is just an overall plan. Let me see that that works. Okay, that's good. So um, this is Coolidge Elementary School, the composite plan. What we didn't do, the last bond issue, was we did not touch the media center. So if you see that blue blob here, that is the renovation of the media center that we have, full renovation right now. We're going to have a bigger slide later, so we'll talk about it. Also, what we didn't do before was the kitchens. If you see that green area, we didn't do anything with the kitchen, so now we have full renovation of the kitchens. Another thing that we didn't do, last bond, we did replace all the corridor doors with the new doors. We did not touch the inside doors into the space. There are quite a few plastic laminate doors, some hollow metal doors, very old doors that had to be replaced. So if you see that purple dot here, and you can see how many doors, interior doors we are replacing right now. Another thing that the last bond issue in the bath, in the toilets, the classroom toilets, we did do one set of bathrooms, gang bathrooms, totally renovated, but the classroom toilets, we replaced the plumbing fixtures, we painted, but we did not do anything with the flooring. We did put new lights. So now we're coming back and updating those bathrooms. Whatever plumbing fixtures are new, everything stays. The lights stay, but we are painting the ceiling, we are painting the floors with epoxy paint, which we are going to show you later on, and painting the walls, so everything will be updated. There will be one bathroom, and that's one by the media center here, that gets a little bit, that's a lighter yellow, if you can see it, mm -hmm. that gets wall tile on the walls, but only one bathroom. Everything else is just the block, we are painting the block. The idea behind that was <clears throat> we wanted to have another main bathroom for if there that's at the front we know at the front of most buildings in 13 bond that's the area that was the space that was chosen for a, a, a full renovation of a toilet room for when we have guests parents visitors etc to a to a building we chose a second location in these uh, k4 buildings and they generally were somewhere near the media center to do that again so that if the building has some parent event some visitor event etc and they're let's say using the media center or that area of the building, there's another one that's a little bit more fully renovated. And after our sector, we knew what we have to do right now at this point. Then we walked the schools with the LPS team to see if anything else is left, because this was from the first round of schools, so maybe we had to update something else. By walking the entire school, we did see that the door frames, the paint was peeling, so we are repainting the door frames only. Also, we did see that the teaching walls, the paint is peeling only on the teaching walls, not the white walls. So at Coolidge, we are going to repaint the teaching walls. Also, looking at the main office, we do have, uh, there was an issue, the um, principal's office too small. There was no place to have a little table for a conference. So we are renovating just that, just added just a little bit to the principal office so that there could be a conference at the same time. And we did add a window to 
um, the clinic so that the people, the secretary can see whoever kid is lying into the clinic. And there were just a few here and there old cabinets because in the first bond, we put a countertop on all the existing casework that was in a very good shape. This time we had a few cabinets left old, so those we are replacing. They are not painted here, but just so that you know, if we found out in any place that there was very old cabinets and they needed to be replaced, we are replacing them. So I'll have Amy take over for the blow-ups. So we'll, um, this is the overall kitchen existing floor plan on your left, and then the new floor plan on the right. So um, let me find my arrow. You'll see that we put some arrows showing the direction of traffic and how we're improving that traffic flow into the space. So um, we're creating a little bit more, um, taking them out of the corridor and putting them into the kitchen um, serving line so it creates a better flow into the space. And then we expanded uh, the kitchen into the um, receiving area with the uh, walk-in cooler as well. So that gives them a little bit more space for functionality. Oh, maybe not. Remember. No, it's the... Sorry. Okay, One of those. It's technology. <laughs> okay, and then this is the um, same concept, the Media Center existing floor plan on your left, and then on the right, the new. Essentially, this space stays the same um, square footage. We just reconfigured it to be more functional and flexible. So you'll notice that um, we have uh, two flex rooms the most. that kind of go on each side so those are flexible spaces for um, teaching and then that dark blue is the what we're calling the new idea factory so that's the creative space um, we have a glass wall that kind of engages the media center into the idea factory to see what's going on and um, create um, activity and then um, the main media center with the books is also very flexible. Everything's on casters, it can roll, it can move. So however the space needs to be reconfigured for um, its use, it's very flexible. I'm gonna jump in real quick and go backwards for a second to the idea factory. First of all, just to be, make sure that everybody's on the same page, uh, we're gonna call it the idea factory. That's gonna be our, our brand for it, but that's what most people would, would recognize as a maker space. Uh, in, in, in many schools, etc., We're putting one in in every K-8 building as we go through the bond. So you'll see um, all of our buildings in the summer of 2022 are K-8 buildings. So you'll see an idea factory as we go through each space. Um, it's going to be tied to the LMC. If, if we've come to an area that we can't fit it in an LMC, it'll be very near the LMC. Our goal is to keep it in that general area. And it's not just for the, the media specialist or if students are with the media specialist. This is really a, a space for creativity, for design, tying into our, our STEM pathways for all teachers and all students. So that's just going to be a very available space. And when we start to, to get into those spaces, um, just as a side note, we, we don't, we, with, refer, with respect to furniture, which we're going to talk about in, a little bit later this evening, we want to give it a bit of a startup, but then also see how they get used and what students need. So we don't want to load it up completely. We'll certainly have tables, chairs, stools, whatever the case may be, some storage, but we want to get them to live in it a little bit. It's the first year that we're having it. We want to see what is needed, what isn't needed before we completely fill it with storage, et cetera. So that's just a little bit on the Idea Factory and also French uh, Associates created a logo for us for the Idea Factory. There's a K, is it K4 and that, there's a K6, I'm, I'm blanking suddenly. But we there's have, for the upper and there's yeah, for the limiter. Okay, yeah. so we have the, we the one logo here, for K4s and another one for five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And I think at one point we may have shown that. that to you and if, if not, we can certainly it's in the 3D presentation. Perfect. It's not Perfect. here, but it's in the Perfect. 3D. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then with regard to the flex spaces, so Coolidge is unique in that you're seeing two of them. Generally speaking, the one on your right actually is not going to have tables and chairs. The principal discussed it with us, and, and, and she had asked to uh, make a kind of a last-minute change and have more soft seating in that space. The one on your left, is go you're going to see this one repeatedly on our, um, on our prints as we go through. 
and that flex space is a general flexible room. So these are, for the most part, the former lab, the computer lab. Hardwired desktops in a lab that we are going to pull those desktops out and have a mobile cart for that room. The tables are on casters, the chairs are on casters. It's a nano wall. I'm sorry if I'm stealing your thunder, oh, I'm a nano wall. Not, it's, it's, not here, it's not, not, in, this not in Coolidge. Oh, not in Coolidge, not right. in Coolidge. that's the only one that does it. But for yeah. many of them, they have a nano wall that opens up and spills into the LMC because of the shape and design of, of Coolidge's LMC, it doesn't, doesn't fit within it. So it's really a, a, a desktop computer lab, 24-7, 365 is a desktop computer lab. <clears throat> Can be used for that because the, they're sitting on those tables. The idea here in the library in totality is, or the media center in totality is flexibility, mobility, use for multiple purposes. So the flex room, if, a, 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 if the a media specialist or another teacher wants to take students into that room and there's a card available and they want to do things on the computer, they can do that. If they want to have um, something without computers, they can do that. If the principal wants to have a staff meeting in that room, they can do that. You can pull all of the tables and chairs out of there and use it for something else. So again, just like in Katie was talking about, and Amy were talking about how all of the furniture, the bookcases, et cetera, are on heavy duty casters and can roll away. Just about everything in the media centers you're gonna see this evening are mobile. Unless it's a bookshelf against an exterior wall, then it's affixed and probably taller, okay? So just a little bit on that. Can we ask questions? Yeah, so I love the um, I love the idea factory. That's cool branding. Um, so I know at Frost we have one that's been set up for a couple of years. Um, how is the square footage? So when when I think of these idea factories, I'm like thinking you could fill the entire building, and I know we can't. But uh, you know, with Frost and and what they've been doing with that, is there are they pushing the limits on their available square footage for the lab that they have right now? And what are the comparison between the square footages? And I, I understand also that Frost is a, a, a middle school. <laughs> middle school. Um, so that makes it a little bit different too. But I, I just see, you know, like in my head, these things are like busting at the seams the second we move into them. Yeah, Frost is uh, actually a 2023 building. So we walked it in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Right? We walked it and the media specialist was in there. The uh, principal was in with us. We took a look at the space and French is gonna try to come up with the design. And frankly, we don't know if where their current one is now is gonna be where it'll be in the future. So Frost is uh, just, just starting to scratch the surface on that. For the rest of the um, buildings that you're going to see here, they do vary in size based upon the space. I mean, when we get to Randolph, you'll see that Randolph's uh, is in a unique space, and it was a really smart idea by French where, where they found that space at Randolph, because as we all know, Randolph is a, a unique uh, LMC. Each one has one, and as the buildings are larger, such as a Cooper and an Emerson, you'll see that the square footage of those idea spaces end up being a little bit larger as well. So we're gonna to try to do and work in tandem with the buildings to make sure that, that they have appropriate amount of space for a whole class to be down there. Okay. Thanks. I just have two quick questions. Um, the white areas, are those um, closets or supply closets? Or I wondered where the, the workroom is, is yeah, gone. Could, could be multiple things. Could be just a, a space that's not being touched. It just basically means not being touched. Doesn't mean it's necessarily a closet. It could be someone's office that just isn't being part of this. Okay, so I guess my question is the workroom. I know mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of subbing and teachers work in a workroom. <laughs> and will there be a, a designated work space for the teachers? There is. Below, just if you're looking at uh, Coolidge, mm -hmm. if you go back to the full plan, to see. if oh. you go to the full plan, mm -hmm. can you switch? Oh, okay. If you get on the screen, no. um, we didn't just just below the oh, I you see can it. see below where we're working that space, so it's more flexible and more workspace. Uh, work the one so off of the office, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's been redone. Oh, yep, okay, yeah. Awesome. And the other question I had is on the if doors. I, if I may, oh, real quick, on workrooms. Yeah. One of the things that we're learning from uh, the building principles as we take our walk through the buildings <clears> is that workrooms, as currently configured in many spaces, don't need to be as large as they used to be yeah. decades ago when they were originally built and there was large equipment in there. 
they found that as the equipment shrinks and the needs shrink and things become digitized, they don't need as large of a space anymore. So you, that's why you might see Perfect. this big room become a little bit smaller. Yeah. That was my question. I just I, <laughs> And if I you look at the the white spaces there mm -hmm. at uh, the media center, yes. the what the upper one is media center storage. Okay. It has the storage for the cards, and the lower one is switchgear. That's mechanical space, so okay. that's why we did not color it. Okay, perfect. My other question is door replacement. When you talked about door replacement. Um, are these all interior or some are exterior and what are we doing about safety and security? Will those doors lock? Do they um, do they have new doors now that are better equipped for security and safety? Uh, okay, those uh, that are being replaced are interior doors. Okay. They are not the classroom's doors. The classroom doors already have the secure feature. Okay. Now the media center didn't, so they had like those push bars. Mm -hmm. So now we have a thumb turn in each push bar mm -hmm. so they can be locked from inside. Okay. So we are updating those too Great, as long as we I go. figured, you know, all these years they yes. probably have mm -hmm. come out with some better secure mm -hmm. doors. Okay, yeah. thanks. Great questions. Um, if we go back, I just want to point out, since we have four more media centers we're going to go through, all of them have the same type of spaces, so the idea factory is going to be consistent in all of them. The flex space, stack location, um, the office, and the, um, office, or the library storage room. So you'll see all these components in all of them as we move forward. The next one is Kennedy. Kennedy, again, we have the media center with that blue blue color. We have the kitchen with the green color. And then if you look at the bottom, all the way at the bottom, there is, for the kitchen, uh, the walk-in freezer, we couldn't locate it inside the school, so it is outside. It is an exterior walk-in freezer. We do have here, again, replacement of the doors. Uh, Kennedy, we're not painting the teaching walls because they did paint the teaching walls <laughs> on their own. So they are in very good shape. And the doors are in good shape, so we don't have to paint, paint the door frames. But we are replacing the doors that were not replaced. So basically, that's all that we are doing at Kennedy. There is only one classroom that didn't have casework, so we're putting the casework in that classroom. And I forgot to say for the other school, you know, that we're upgrading all the vertical unit vents now that have air conditioning. So all the classrooms will have air conditioning, and we do have, the kitchen will have air conditioning, and the media A pretty big piece of, of this renovation. We sort of just take it for granted that yes, we're doing that as we go into these five buildings plus the other buildings this summer that are getting AC only, but that is going to be happening at each of these buildings. Kennedy's, they, they had a spot where they needed some lockers. It's an empty spot in the hallway. And Correct, so we're adding those lockers. Locker there. I'm going to move to the next one. Yeah. Looking at the um, existing kitchen, most of you probably know that the kitchen over there is pretty tiny, so. Um, the footprint is um, expanding into, there's a storage room and a toilet room that we're going to expand into and allow for a larger uh, serving line for the students. And then... And the door, the doorway. We're and taking one of the doorway to the gym. Yep, so we're um, reducing the, yep, the access into that do um, gymnasium space. And then we're also going to take over part of the storage room on the right um, there's electrical in there, but we are going to allow for a little bit of dry storage, and then the office area for the um, the kitchen will be in there. And then you'll see that we show the walk-in cooler freezer down at the bottom, but that is down that hallway outside. This may be a very small kitchen, but the change is going to be enormous. They're very excited about it. And there will be, as they are serving, there will be like three roll-up windows so that's where the serving line will be with the roll-up windows. So if you can picture going into Kennedy, one of the first things you look into is the, the gymnasium and multipurpose room. And right now there are two sets of double doors. And the school indicated that they would be very comfortable with one set of double doors 
um, for entry and exit. There are also obviously other um, egress areas in the in that um, gym, and so being able to take that portion for the kitchen, um, you'll see is a is a significant piece of that. And then also, um, as they mentioned, going into that storage area, so that aesthetically will look a little bit different for those of you that are familiar going into the school, um, taking down that those two double doors into one. And then the media center, um, the existing is on the right. This one we were able to um, use the nano wall, which is what Phil was referring to as the glass wall that folds and collapses so that it creates a larger space. So that is used at this um, flex space, which is on the left. Um, so you can open that up and you can basically double your capacity in that space to present or have uh, professional development. It allows a very flexible use. Um, and then the book stacks are all mobile, just like the other building, um, but they do have a zone that um, they'll typically be in uh, for functionality. And there's some soft seating peppered throughout, so it creates a lot of um, places where students can just sit down, take a book, or you know, kind of gather their thoughts. And then this one, the, there's a separate teaching space on the, uh, <clears throat> the right, um, over the, yep, on the right, um, that the teacher will use as um, their teaching wall and for a group of students. Um, <clears throat> on the lower part, you'll see that there are two red offices. Those are the intervention offices um, that are currently in the library, but they're going to have access from the outside now and they'll have access to each other um, through that space. And our idea factory for here is a little bit of L shape as well. Um, and it has a full glass wall, so more visibility into that space to you know, see the in, um, interaction. And then we have um, the office and storage as well. Um, and we moved the office up. So the other th feature you'll notice with the offices, we kind of centralized them and created a glass so that they can view the entire media center from their office if they're in there. And the uh, station that's in front of the office, in, in an example here <coughs> for Kennedy, that is their circulation desk, which is also mobile if they want it to be. Now, I don't imagine that each day they're going to be wandering around with their circulation desk and moving it throughout the library. But we are going to have two different spaces that the media specialist indicated, uh, one spot on one portion, where, like in this one, and on opposite side of the library. There'll be another floor core that has data and power. So if they ever did want to move it to another part of the library, they have that option. And as with anything, they could just unplug the data, unplug the power, and roll it completely away, along with all the other furniture if they were using the library for something else, for some special event. The circulation desk is much smaller than what they used to have up to now, so that's yeah. one thing. Um, the next one is Randolph. Randolph is, as you know, a very specific school. So you, you can see, oh, that blue area, it's quite a big blue area. That's the media center kind of divided into portions. So one is the truly media center for teaching. The other one is more for different uses. Uh, Amy will talk about it later on also. The kitchen is in the green, and we do have the walk-in freezer outside. Um, at Randolph, all the doors are, the existing doors are wood doors, interior doors in a very good shape, so we didn't see a reason to replace any of those doors. The paint is also holding really good, and Randolph was one of the later projects, it was not the first year. So we are not painting teaching walls or painting door frames because everything looks very good shape. The bathrooms, though, we're doing the same as in the other schools, so painting the floor with epoxy paint, painting the walls, and painting the, the ceiling. For the kitchen here, you'll see um, the existing kitchen um, is more towards the upper, and then there is um, a storage custodian uh, space that we're going to um, remove the wall between and expand. Uh, right now, a lot of the kitchen equipment is in the receiving space, so we're going to move that all into the green area, so it's all very easily accessible for them. And then the custodian will move into that receiving space, so it kind of swaps those spaces, makes it a lot more functional. And then you'll see that the serving line grows in length. Um, it has a full height grill that rolls all the way up. And so that opens up the serving line for when the students walk through and then closes up at the end of the um, day. 
And then for the walk-in freezer cooler, that's just right out the back door there um, on a concrete pad. Mm -hmm. Suffice it to say, those outdoor yep. freezers are made I, to be that. Those are industrial. Yeah, those, those are going to be new. They are not out there. Correct. correct. Those no, they're, they're correct. new pieces, and yes. they have. Correct. The, yes. They'll be secured, obviously. Correct. Yes. They'll be secured. And, and we didn't mention this before, but as we go through each kitchen, um, the appliances that are in there are also evaluated. Some, if they're in good condition, newer condition, we will keep. Some that are much older, and some is original equipment we replace. So we can't definitively say that every uh, kitchen in every building is going to have X replaced. We really went in with the kitchen consultant and with Pat Schuhart, the, the supervisor of food service, with uh, Mr. Lau, Mr. Roberts, who all are familiar with it, and they, they all judge it and say, this has been giving us a lot of problems, this should be replaced, that we just bought a few years ago, that we're going to keep, kind of thing. I'm sorry, I'm still going back to the uh, outdoor freezer areas or the refrigeration. Um, do, do other schools have these, uh, utilize these, do we know? I mean, I just think about theft or do, is there, do they haven't, do you think we're going to have any problems with security and food, uh, you know, keeping it out there? Um, they're locked. They're locked yes. and secured. These are locked and yeah. secured. Uh, they're near the building. We'll have cameras. There's always, anytime you have something outside, there's always going to be. I know, because uh, we have sheds. Yes, so we, we have lots of, yes, so yes, yes. But these are, these are meant to be locked, uh, are meant to be outside. They are locked. Uh, they'll be, they'll have an enclosure uh, they, around them. They have an enclosure around them, and uh, they have specific insulation, so they are meant to be outside. Sure, like in really hot weather, they're, they're durable. Mm -hmm. okay. And Mr. Weber, are you familiar with these being yes. located in yeah. other districts? Yeah, we've done, it, it's not a, it's not a one-off. We've done this in other spots. Same thing, um, renovating older buildings that just didn't have the footprint to, sure. to house these, so they, they've been put outside, yes. Okay, great, thanks. Where we can, we're putting it in, inside, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but where we cannot, we have to put it outside. Sure. Okay, the next one is Randolph, uh, the media center, the OMC. So the existing floor plan, um, some of you are familiar with this, it's um, the center area um, is raised up um, half a floor, so you'll see the dark blue for the idea factory, that's up on the second level, as we'll call it. Um, so when you we get to the later in the presentation, you'll see some images that kind of show you that um, connectivity to the spaces around it. So we're hoping that engages people. Um, on the top, we'll say the top, I, I don't think that's north, but um, the top side is where the stacks are. Um, and we also have the media uh, LMC office, so she can view that entire side from her office. And then the teaching flex space is um, with, uh, uh, on this lower portion with a nano wall, so that opens wide up, um, so you can use that space and make it grow or shrink as needed. Um, and then this one, the workroom stays about the same. It shrinks a little bit um, to accommodate that flexible room, um, but the functionality stays the same. And then we have two offices which are moving from that idea factory space down into the main area. So those two intervention offices will be moved and we gain a little bit of storage as well next to there. And then that lower portion is considered like a meeting space, like a flexible space, um, just has different seating, can be used for PD or whatever is needed for that. A very, very flexible, no books on that side. And then those, there's like a glass box of offices, those will remain the same, so they still have their use. <clears throat> now we come to Cooper, which is the upper elementary school. Again, you, you can see the media center in blue. You can see the kitchen. <coughs> the kitchen is within whatever uh, parameters it was because it is a big kitchen. So we don't have a walk-in freezer outside here. Um, you do see that we do have replacement of doors, interior doors again, and they're mostly the closet doors in Cooper. Um, we are painting the door frames because the paint is peeling at Cooper for, for the door frames only. Um, also, if you look at the, um, when we walked the school, um, it came obvious that uh, in the main office, uh, the principal especially um, 
was not connected to the main office because to come to the principal, you have to go outside into the corridor and come to. So we tried to incorporate both the assistant principal and the principal to be part of the main office. So that's why you see the red areas there. The front of the main office was bigger than it should be probably. So we pushed it a little bit, sized that down so we can have the other functions work properly. So that is in the media center. And also there are offices that are there in red that we don't have a blow up to the left a little, yes. Those are some offices that were in a kind of very bad shape. So we're just doing a makeup, new doors, uh, new carpet, new, uh, new paint, basically. So they look like a better shape. Um, now, as for the bathrooms, we walked every single gang bathroom. And um, most of the plumbing fixtures were replaced, not all of them. So we're replacing the ones that were not replaced. But uh, looking at the bathrooms, there were holes on the walls. There's some glazing mirror existing with holes. Mirror moved here to there. So they were not in the best shape. So what was decided <laughs> for Cooper and also for Emerson, we are redoing the bathrooms in that way that the floor we are painting the same as the elementary schools with the epoxy paint, which you will see kind of a sample of what it is. <coughs> but the, on the walls, we are putting new porcelain tile on the walls. So all the bathrooms here will be updated and will look very nice. For this um, kitchen layout, we didn't really change the footprint, just the functionality of the space. So. You'll notice on the left there's arrows showing basically the, the student would enter and then go directly right. Well now they have two options. They can queue um, towards the uh, upper portion or the lower and gr get grab and goes or, and then check out. So it kind of disperses and allows more students into that space at once. Um, that's been a, I'm sorry, that, that's been one of the ideas where we're needed to get more students into the kitchens if they had the space to get them out of the halls, et cetera. So that's that's kind of a theme that we'll see moving forward with other projects. We've already walked the, uh, the kitchens, as I mentioned before, for the 23 projects and the same idea of, of principals saying, we have a pretty long line out here that, that falls into the, to the hallway. We're gonna try to get more students in, into a couple of lines and then back out again. So that's just a, a common theme. And this one, um, there's also a, a window towards the top that is for a breakfast or snack time that would still be functional as well. We're leaving that in place for them to use. Um, and then there's, we're expanding, giving them more dry storage and their walk-in cooler um, freezer space is expanded as well. For the LMC, um, this space, um, we expanded um, the classroom, which now is the dark blue for the uh, idea factory. So that one is larger, and, um, but it has glass all the way around it. So it allows the visibility from the entire media s space. Um, there's a darker blue with the L. So this one, because it is um, an upper elementary, there is more uh, book uh, storage. So we have the mobile bookcases, still flexible, but that's mainly where the books will remain. And then we have the flex space, which has a glass wall on the one side that opens up for flexibility and then also some glass doors to still provide enough visibility into that space, as well as um, two um, small meeting rooms. Um, one I think is gonna be an office for- um, They're both intervention. Oh, they're, yeah, both intervention. they're both intervention. Okay, mm -hmm. so two intervention offices. That's the bottom right. On bottom the bottom right. right. Mm -hmm. So now we come to the middle school. Um, Emerson, you can see on the top, it is the media center that has basically, uh, along with Randolph, the biggest changes. We, uh, you'll see it later, but uh, if you see that angled wall, that's where you're gonna enter now the media center, not the way that it was entered before. Um, the kitchen is at the bottom, you can see the kitchen Again, it stays, everything that we did in the kitchen stays in the same parameters. It doesn't expand, and the walk-in freezer is inside. Uh, Emerson uh, has hollow metal doors. It doesn't have wood doors like the other schools up to now. So those hollow metal doors, we're repainting the hollow metal doors because they, the paint was peeling. 
repainting the door frames and repainting the hollow metal doors. There are some interior doors that we have to replace. You see, we, with the with the purple, that's mostly the closet doors that were in a very bad shape. Um, at Emerson, uh, also we are painting the teaching wall because that was peeling. The paint was peeling, and we're putting rubber base in the classroom because right now it is you have the VCD and a very bad transition between the existing wall and the VCD. So we're just putting just a base so it can it will give us kind of a distinction between the, the wall and the floor. So those are in of course the AC to in all the units. We do have the bathrooms again the same thing. Uh, epoxy floor and wall tile in all the gang bedrooms that are uh, yellow. One more thing here when we walked, the cafeteria was too small, so we had to expand the cafeteria. So if you look at there, we knocked a few openings in the wall of that storage room and used the storage room to expand the cafeteria. And for that matter, we had to replace the floor in the existing um, cafeteria because first it was not in a good shape and now we're gonna have nice new flooring continuing to the new expanded cafeteria. If you're familiar with Riley's cafeteria, mm -hmm. that's the same idea. Their, their, their sister schools are very similar built and they had a storage, you know how they had that little mm -hmm. carve yeah. out with extra space? Yeah. That's what we're gonna do, something very similar to Emerson. No. So there is a storage space there now, yeah. so they do have the same type of area, we just have to remove the storage space and open it up. So that's, if you can think of Riley, very similar. Uh, so just one quick question. I've heard, uh, or Brian, a, a couple times now that the, the, the teaching wall was the one that um, had peeled and the other walls were in pretty good shape. Do we know perhaps why the teaching walls? I'll let you take a stab at it, but my, <laughs> my guess is twofold. One, um, the rest of the walls were a lighter color and it's a, it's a heavier, darker color for the most part on those teaching walls. And that's the area where, where they're, they're at. There's probably, you know, bumping up against, putting up your tables, come up here and, and, and drop your papers off and you have something against it. It's probably gonna take more of the daily, um, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to say, yeah, 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 wear and tear, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> because that's that's up to the front where most of the things are happening and the teacher's desk is there, the computer's there, the whole kit and caboodle, whereas the sides in the back don't have that. And a lot of sure. things were taped on the wall too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you take it down, it's gonna be, we, uh, we're we looking into a better paint, so we do have a specified better paint that will not peel this time. Oh, that's great. We're kind of totally sure that it's gonna be okay this time. <laughs> good, good, thank Brian, you. Did you have something? No, Phil stole my answers, but it, yeah, it's the things that <laughs> yeah. that's there that we saw He's most good, action. Good. Next one, yeah. So looking um, at the kitchen or the um, existing and the new, you'll notice the footprint doesn't um, expand on this, but the functionality of the space. So it allows for um, two lines of queuing. Um, so the, as the student checks out, there'll be two different locations they can go and it'll allow more students in there at once. Um, they also have um, the walk-in cooler freezer is um, over towards Right there, yep, that's your walk-in cooler freezer inside the space. And then we have some dry storage on racks that are movable up top. And then as Katie explained, they're expanding into that um, existing storage room. So that will allow more student space for seating to spread out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is one of the major uh, renovations. That, um, Right now, the media center is accessed. Um, there's yep. There's a, a door kind of hidden down the corridor, so we're bringing that to the main portion of the corridor and kind of um, chamfering it off so that that will um, allow students to easily see and walk into the space. So you'll head into the um, LMC now, and there'll be two group rooms um, to the right, and those will be um, glass openings so you can see in there easily. And then to the left will be the book stacks. So those are kind of in the lower portion of the um, LMC right now. That's like a lower ceiling uh, based on the existing building configuration. So we kind of created that little nook for them to kind of go in there and take a book and kind of get into uh, reading. Mm -hmm. And then in the main area, it's very flexible, open. Um, you have your flex uh, space all the way to the left 
with that nano wall again, so that glass wall that will open up, allow you to see as many people as you want. Um, and there'll be a projector and teaching wall all the way to the left, so you can um, basically bring everybody out into that space. And then the workroom for this one stays, we kind of stay in the same space, but um, reconfigure it, make it more functional for everybody has access from the LMC as well as from the staff lounge. So very functional there. And then all the way to the right is, in the dark blue is the idea factory for this space. So as we get into the middle school, the idea factories kind of grow in size. Phil, my recollection was we were having a problem in that LMC. Was it the floor or the wall? Moisture. The moisture. It the moisture. Yeah, moisture. yeah it, it, it is. It, and behind their uh, LMC, <coughs> it is a, a wet area. And when we did their paving, that back parking lot, we had to dig deep to get past the water issue. So we, we ended up um, having a lot of water in that parking lot when we did it a few years ago. I think it's been two, three years now. Three years. Three years. So there is a lot of water there. We had moisture issues. We had addressed it and um, did a moisture test on the concrete under the carpet. And there's a certain section of it that was higher than normal. So you then have to adhere the new carpeting in the appropriate way, giving it the appropriate barrier. So mm -hmm. we're gonna address that as we're in there, making sure that we're, we're taking care of, because it's a known issue. Mm -hmm. French knows it. It's part of the, the standard for, for what we wanna do when we go in and do the installation of carpet, et cetera. And with the updated HVAC systems, we're also hoping that can help pull moisture out of that as well. Okay. But it, we do have that in our specification. I can just go. No, we're good. <laughs> we're <on the> <laughs> we'll let Brian start <laughs> next time. <laughs> Okay, so now this is just, just so that you see what the bathrooms will kind of look like. You see the epoxy uh, floor, not all of them have the same color. I just wanted to show you something. So it's gonna be with flex, and everybody chose their own color. And also the, the wall tile, we do have shown something right here. So everybody chose their wall tile, the filled and the accent. Everybody will have an accent in the middle someplace. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to show you what it's gonna look like. And those tiles are a little bit bigger, so it will look very nice. One, one thing to expand on for the epoxy paint, I don't think you touched on the last one uh, presentation. Um, we did explore replacing tile with tile. Um, it involves a lot of demolition, a lot of reconfiguring of plumbing fixtures. You get into the chase walls. Um, so this option, um, we went and got samples. French has done other districts we looked at, um, but also resolves um, some of the clearance issues we'd have we, without ripping a floor out and some of the, the wall-mounted urinals, uh, floor-mounted urinals, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, from a maintenance standpoint, this does get rid of, rid of grout lines where it'll help maintenance staff clean facilities better as well. So there's a lot of considerations, a lot of different um, pricing exercises just to understand which was best route, and we ended up going with the epoxy paint on the floors. And it will help the smell, especially mm -hmm. in the boys' bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian did a nice job. <laughs> and it has a little bit of texture, so it's slip resistant, so yeah. you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> okay, so we moved through the renovation projects. We're going to um, touch um, high level here on the AC upgrades. So we have um, seven projects that are going to be um, going through AC upgrades. I'm going to have a hard time reading that, so I'm going to pull up this. Yeah. Um, so we've got, we're working on Grant, Grant Hayes, Hoover, Johnson, Riley, Holmes, and Churchill. So all of those buildings will um, be replacing um, or upgrading the, um, upgrading the existing unit to have cooling. Um, and then, so for example, uh, Grant, we have a partial um, VU re, um, vertical, ventilator, vertical unit ventilator replacement in the classrooms as required um, if those existing units um, were not able to accept the new coil. So um, if we go to the next slide, um, what we did is um, our mechanical engineer went through every building in depth and determined whether or not the existing units could re have a, a coil added to them, which would be above the ceiling. And so um, this is the detail just showing that in the existing units that they would replace the coil 
um, and some of the ceilings would have to be lowered uh, slightly, um, about six inches. So we have drop ceilings that would just come down with a reveal around them to enclose that coil. Not the entire ceiling, just a no, section. Just, 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 a, portion. just a small like, portion like, that would come yeah. down. Like not, yeah. not even not even close yeah, to that type of, of depth. Yep. Just a little bit to have the, the, the it'll, it'll hang out. You, you, would, you might see it, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't really <laughs> Notice it, it's not dropping down hugely. It's not a full bulkhead that runs across oh, a wall. Okay. It's just an just area. Mm -hmm. No, those are new ceilings. We would not replace all of them. Just yeah. just a little portion. And you, it's not gonna be noticeable because we just have a special trim that drops it down, that sure. little portion down. So yeah, so basically and it's it lines up with a with a unit vent. So it kind of looks like it's on purpose. Hopefully. It is on purpose. We're doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're headed towards um, Randolph. We um, did some renderings and images of um, the new LMC space. Okay. So if you look at this, now we wanted to show you a little bit color so you can see what it is. We're showing here in floor plan so you can see the space as we showed it before, but we put it kind of the furniture so you can see the furniture, some colors that will be in that space. If you go to the next one. Now, we have images, so if you imagine that you kind of cut that building, mm -hmm. so you can see from up above, so you have an aerial view, but you can see everything, so you can see from this point, you see the, the flex space, you see the, the bookshelves, and you see in, on the back, you can see that multi-purpose space. Mm -hmm. Again, looking from the other side, I don't want to explain too much because there are some other views, but. So you can see, we just wanted to kind of show you what that's going to look like. Really, so we pause I, for a minute with the flux space, um, which you can see the nano wall is pushed back, that glass wall that's an accordion folding oh, wall, yes. and it's pushed back so that if you were in that space and the doors were closed, there would be, the, for instance, the three rows of tables as, as it's shown here with the teaching wall. If you open that up, you can have people seated in the soft seating area. You can have them seated in that additional fourth row. Do you know where I'm talking yep, about? Yep. Everybody and just, with and, me. And just to add here. to that, there, we're going to have sound um, at two zones, one in the, the flex room, another zone in the central area. They're not to compete with each other. They're to add to. So you wouldn't want to be running both of them with two different people talking on a microphone or running something through it at the same time because they're to compete. The point of it would be just what Mrs. Oakwood was talking about. If you're in the classroom teaching, you can run that speaker in that room. If you're going to open up the nano wall and spill out and have a larger group, now you can put the sec second zone on, and now you're getting the audio spread further. So that was the, the theory behind that. Um, thank you. On the nano wall, how um, the glass that's in it, will that be a special glass uh, it for is safety a, glass? It is special laminated glass for that wall. Okay. Yes. And how easy is it to open and close? Like it would have to be done by, uh, uh, could a, a teacher can open that, mm -hmm. a student could open that? It's or very easy. We can do it. So we did two or other districts that had these walls in place and have had them for a couple of years now because um, just for maintenance purpose, how much they're lasting, but they operated in front of us. And um, in this instance, it was the principal that he opened it back and forth right in front of us without any assistance. So Okay. It, and there's also, you don't have to open it to get out of it. There's a door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so that's just to, to, to let everybody know. Yes. It's not like you have to open the whole accordion just to walk in and out of it. There's a door in, in one of them. Okay. And the final question, cleaning that type of a surface, um, was that just a general Windex type? product exactly. that you would use on that exactly because exactly. i imagine there'd be fingerprints mm -hmm. yeah just okay. just like yeah. you clean the normal windows nothing special okay we have our own items that we, we clean the windows <laughs> we don't use windex we don't like the high ammonias but we we do have our yeah. own products that we clean glass with yeah i just want to point out too i don't know if we mentioned um you may recall on the opposite end of the lmc um, we built up the walls a bit. It's not to the ceiling, but I just want to remind you that a couple of years ago, we enclosed this space here and created some teaching offices and some other intervention rooms um, when we um, changed some programming um, at the school. And so similarly, I don't know if we've talked about the fact that we're building up the walls on the other side of the media center. So previously, 
the media center was completely open, open to the hallways. You could see all the way through from one, one set of classrooms on one side to the other. And so that's going to be a pretty significant difference here at Randolph. I know it's hard to imagine if you haven't been in there for a bit, um, but that whole section right now is completely wide open. There are, there are no walls. So the book stacks serve essentially as the perimeter of that area. Mm -hmm. So now there, there will be walls. It will not go to the ceiling, but if you can imagine that. And it, we can see that from the images now that yeah. follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can, can we just get to, I think, running through these? Yeah. Yeah. They can stare at these um, okay. I, I, at their there leisure you go. and, and whatnot. Yeah. We can get to the, the, the Now we go to the, So this is just the floor plan with camera view. So you'll notice that there's a, a red dot, and then it spans out to show you a view. So when you're looking at it, it'll say camera one, and then that relates to our image camera one. So as we go through these, and you're looking at your packet, that might help you or, oh. orientate yourself. Um, so this is our camera view one looking at the flex space in that nano wall and depending on the length of the nano walls They either split in the middle or they all push to one side So I think most of these ones in this phase are pretty long So they split in the middle and that helps with the weight and the ease of opening them This is when you're in the flex space looking out into um, the media center into the book stacks Um, and then this is from the opposite side, the median space, that flexible space, and looking at the um, idea factory from the one side, so you can see the visibility into that space. Another view of the uh, median space, looking um, towards the back of it. So this is the existing wall. That That's the know, existing wall. Ago. Yep. That's right. And now we're up into um, the idea factory and you'll see that's the logo um, that was created for the lower elementary school schools um, and the windows you can see that they can view out people can view in very interactive this is the raised portion so while there are stairs we do also have a lift we've always had a lift um, for ada purposes and then this is the outside so looking towards the idea factory and here's your lift over here to the mm -hmm. right we're maintaining that Um, then here we are looking um, kind of down the center with all the flexible seating, that soft seating that can move around. And then this is a view looking at the book stacks. So you can see that we're maintaining um, quite a few books, uh, but these are all flexible. This is mobile. They move around. And then you can see that blue wall is new, um, as Andrea mentioned. That wall and then the side wall, those are kind of creating the boundaries and allowing us to have some bookshelves on One there. of the other items that was a tenant for the media centers was, <coughs> is, is sight lines. So we don't want to have in the middle of the room a tall bookshelf. So you can see from this picture that we have <coughs> the ability to look across and see as opposed to against the wall, then we can go a little higher. And this one is looking up um, on the other side of the uh, idea mm -hmm. factory. Um, there's some booths that create some um, unique spaces for the students to gather. And then this one is just kind of showing the profile of the ceiling. Right now the ceiling um, <coughs> pitches um, from the center out, and so now we're tiering it. Um, it, it starts low at the book stacks to, stacks to create like a little um, more uh, intimate space, and then it tiers up as it gets towards the idea factory. And then this, um, the this is our 360 view. So if you click on that, now you might have to escape out of, because we need to open the website. Okay. So this will be an interactive uh, view of what we just kind of walk through. Katie, Jeremy, do you want to mention the light fixtures while we're getting that up? Well, we, we do have, if you look at the light fixtures, we try to do some fun um, fun light Thank fixtures. You. So you have some round light fixtures, there are some square light fixtures, there are some triangle light fixtures. So we wanted to make the space mm -hmm. look more nice yeah. and, and, and cozy, and the kids would like it. Mm -hmm. So. Keep talking about light fixtures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think you remember for the, while well, they're pulling this up, the, um, 
with regard to the book stacks and how many books. Um, so Mrs. Bowling and Mr. Casada worked with um, Mr. Francis and Mrs. O'Brien and Mr. Green to um, work with the media specialists on what uh, the American Library Association recommends as a per book um, number of texts that you should have available within the school. Um, and so each of these spaces um, actually have uh, room for books that exceed uh, those those recommended allowances. And so um, while we will be encouraging some weeding of some of these collections and updating where needed, um, there is certainly going to be ample space uh, for the book collections in each of the schools. Is that right? Yeah, I think um, uh, Frank and Phyllis have a nice switch windows. Yeah, flip us over, Fred. Okay, so where did I go? Okay. Oh, I don't know what this is. Oh, that's in this camera uh, yeah, okay, so that's where they are. Um, that's not it. All right, let's go this one. Okay, try again here, sorry. Okay, all right, so this is our 360 view on the um, book stack side. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of just we can zoom in. So you can see the light fixtures yeah. now, the triangle. Yeah, the colors and patterns may or may not be exactly what they've chosen. This had to be created, right? But we did work with the buildings to, to choose uh, patterns, finishes, etc., cetera, and colors. Uh, the carpet is what was chosen. We have the carpet, what was chosen, put into the, yeah. the imaging. Yeah. Just, this, just this. a little disclaimer so nobody <laughs> comes back later on and says, it was supposed to be blue and white checkers. And that's the office and this is where you can kind of see that tiered ceiling a little better mm -hmm. and you can see the uh, the openings that we have to have to the corridors you can see the lockers behind oh, yeah. because we still had to op to leave some openings so we don't have to do a firewall so it's going to look significantly different again if you think that's completely yeah. open right now okay, no, and, and then i got the other side so then we're going to head over to the, the meeting side. Okay. There we go. You see those lights again? Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, those lights. So this one, we kind of have a corridor that kind of heads down the center. So to the offices, the workroom right here. Um, and then, ooh. Mouse is a little funny. Vertical. And then, <laughs> sorry about that. And then towards the idea factory, there's no access to the idea factory, just visibility. And then we created, um, with the soffit and the carpet, we created this delineation for this media space, mm -hmm. meeting space, um, separate from these offices that are existing. So those offices will remain. We're just putting new ceiling and making them a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you want to go to Emerson? We're going to go through the stills at Emerson probably a little, little more quickly. You can, you can have this copy and look through them, and then we can get to the 360, which is maybe a little bit more fun. <laughs> we, we apologize for taking so <laughs> no, long, no, no, but we're no, so excited that <laughs> just. Yeah. This is important. Okay. Um, this is great technology. You're just cutting into Phil's time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. You're stuck. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, so now we're moving to Emerson. So same thing here with the floor plan, just to give you an overall look into that space. Here's where you really see that entrance change. So that's yeah, it's in the corner. Yeah, so that's right. where you're going to see the big change here is how you enter into the space. So we'll just kind of give you the overview here. There and it is. There. Yeah, really see it. And there's your entrance. Oh, yeah. Over down this hallway. Yeah. That's that's where they were coming before. Yeah. Or that or the other uh, or, from, this, or that hallway. It was really a very narrow mm -hmm. entrance. Mm -hmm. Um and you it's almost like going in a back door. Mm -hmm. So now there's a main entrance going in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. corner there was the workroom before. If you look at the original, you know, when you go back and look at the original plans, that corner that got 
cut across, and now there's those at main entrance doors. That whole box of that corner was the, the workroom. And they said this is their main corridor, so this is where most of the students were entering anyway, so we're making it a lot easier. And, and we will have a soffit there, so you're gonna know you're coming to the media center. We couldn't show it here in this mm -hmm. section, but there will be a soffit in a color. Um, same thing as you're looking through, you can you can see the camera views from where they're taken on the floor plan. We're looking at uh, from the media center towards the book stacks here. This one um, has a, a bigger um, main area, so we use this system from Armstrong that allowed us to have a design, but it was subtle and created um, interest. And uh, you'll see as we move through, um, you'll see those triangles, they kind of reflect in the space. So it's not, tiles. it's not square. The ceiling tiles. Yeah. The ceiling yeah. tile, not and square or rectangle, but they are triangles. But yeah. it is a standard, so it's nothing custom made. Yeah. Okay. It's a system. So yeah, this is the, the view when you come into the space. You're going to see that there are the small median spaces to the side and that you kind of are directed into the main portion. I like all the triangles. And we do have those clouds. They're kind of see-through clouds, so you can see through them. Mm -hmm. But they have the lights in between them. Yeah, so really another feature to have that triangular shape. Oh. I like the purpose passion pride. Is, that Is it nice? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's what it's going to be. Really nice touch. And we're looking towards the flex space. Same thing here with the nano wall opening up. And then the book nook. So this is a, a same thing. We're trying to create a more intimate space for students to grab a book and sit down and read it. This is looking um, towards the middle of the space. Very flexible seating. And then we're inside now the idea factory. So this one you can see um, we have those uh, funky lights um, kind of working with the whole creativity and um, if you can is, can you make it a little bigger or no I just want to see I mean, actually you have in front of you, you can see the, 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 the what if idea factory the oh, logo yes. on the far wall oh, that's oh. so the what if and then the I and the F are idea factory that's for a little bit older yep and I love the way we incorporated the, the gears were incorporated. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the gears with our, yep, yes. yep, yeah. with our car community okay, so character. Now I'm ready for my 360. I like it. <coughs> yeah, so we're now to the 360, so Brian has to do his thing. That's why you brought Along this wall, this is um, kind of existing where the bookshelves kind of recess in now, so we're removing those, and we're creating the little bit of accent walls there, as well as some um, small group areas. So this one has a small TV, um, a little group can sit up there, and then this is more of an interactive space with a marker board and storage, so on each side. Mm. And then um, the center, the focal point is um, the this large seating space that would um, is very mobile, but it um, sits underneath these uh, triangles. Kind of gives it a space within a space um, that isn't too defined, so it can be flexible. Get my view here. Workroom that stays um, the same as it is now. This glass, but we uh, uh, repurpose the functionality of that space. That's looking at the flex space. Mm -hmm. And we added a window yeah. as well, so That's more natural light, yeah. more engagement. So to orient yourself. That's their their track is on the other their parking lot, and then the track is the other side of those oh, walls yeah. where it says "Purpose, okay. Passion, Pride." Uh, the office, and then looking towards the idea. Factory. And, and you can see the uh, the mobile desk here. Yes, mm -hmm. the circulation desk. Mm -hmm. And then our group rooms, and then your new entrance. And your books are look so different. In the ceiling will be those colors. We do have this triangles are just off colors a little bit.
the, the tables that we're, we're, we're getting uh, are going to be casters. You can flip them and then nest them and push them away. Again, all those, the idea of chairs are stackable. I try to get those out of the way if need be, et cetera. So just again, trying to make sure things are mobile, nothing's too high, you have good sight lines, et cetera. So obviously the focus, as you know, we've been really thinking about reimagining and redesigning our media centers. I think you can see that's what is being done. Certainly we have the core purpose of, you know, uh, being able to check out books and have library media instruction. Um, we're really uh, very, very pleased in our district to have um, media specialists at each of our schools to be able to provide that high quality instruction. There's also many areas purposely designed for um, collaboration of students when they're in those spaces. So perhaps in addition to a class that may be down there, there's a teacher taking a class into the flex space or small groups of students coming down to do research and working on projects. So these spaces have been very intentionally designed and I wanna thank everyone who spent a great deal of time over the past two years um, as part of our library media task force. Um, and media, media specialists, administrators, uh, cabinet members, um, who are all part of really reimagining and rethinking these spaces and these roles. Um, and then French really taking that to the next level and putting it uh, into these designs for us. So we uh, truly cannot wait to get started. And um, while we talk about these spaces a lot, Again, getting back to things like the doors and the restrooms and finishing those those spaces off. I think you know we were had to be a bit conservative in the first uh, the first round, but now we're able to go back around and take care of the kitchens and um, some some unique spaces in each school. So um, one of the things we truly appreciate is um, as French and PMC take these walks with our district bond team. We're able to really talk specifically about what individual schools need not just uh, one design that fits all. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is probably more for Phil, maybe, or <laughs> Mrs. Oakwist. Um, so with all the redesign of the kitchens and the improvement in space and cold and frozen storage and dry food storage, is this gonna give us the ability to maybe up our lunch game a little bit? Is that what sort of the end product of this will be? Well, a couple things. Um, one, I think we're waiting to uh, get clarity on whether or not the um, programming as we've done it this year and last year with regard to uh, meals being available to all students, whether or not that will continue. Um, that has certainly impacted the number of students going through uh, for lunch each day. So I think that's really one piece because if that continues across the country, we still um, are, are facing some of those supply um, and demand issues that exist. So I think that's probably the first question we need answered. Um, and then from there, we really will talk about um, not only the, the process for students going through, but what is available and what they can access while they're in there. I don't know if you want to yeah, add something yeah, to I'm that. gonna turn my little microphone off. <laughs> this is just for information tonight. Yes, yes. It is. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next, I want to invite a TMP, our partners at TMP, Melanie Hall, John Castellana, and Chris Hess. They'll be, are all three of you coming up? Okay. Didn't mean to pull somebody up here who didn't want to be. <laughs> uh, we're, they've got a presentation on the Livonia Career Technical Center and the uh, robotics home on the same site. They also have a presentation that we're gonna walk through. I'm gonna hand out, Thank I'll you. hand these Thank out you. to all of you. And uh, you can follow along with us. Again, there might be a couple of slides that, um, that we added that just had uh, some, some informational pieces, but the main pictures are on here. Ooh, slippery. Oh, that was the good paper. <laughs> Well, Phil is, is uh, passing that out. I just want to say on behalf of TMP, thank you for uh, having us work directly with you. It's been a fun exercise uh, going through a lot of visioning mm -hmm. um, on this project that we're going to be presenting. And then you're going to see us a little bit later. Uh, I'm not sure when, but uh, on the Early Childhood Center that we're also working on. So we're, we have another uh, 
meeting this Thursday morning early on that one to show some uh, further updates on, on that. But I'm going to just sort of step aside and I'm going to turn this over to Melanie Hall, who is our project manager, who's been uh, making sure that we stay on track all the way through the project, and Chris Hess, who's our project designer, and the two of them will lead you through uh, this part of the presentation. And I'll just observe. Thanks, John. Okay. okay. Brian, you're right, going to start at something, right? Yeah. Okay. Same kickoff. Okay, um, great. First slide looks a little bit familiar from the last one we had, just showing progress to date. Um, the way we set it up, we do have one CM on, on the bond program, but two different um, architectural teams, engineering teams. So, Chris, you can click to the next one, just to show the checklist, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Um, same thing, showing progress. So, where we are now, um, we got through our DD estimate. So, this is a DD design set, um, fly through. And beyond, I guess I'll call it a plus. We're, we're, darn plus, yeah. we're working like on construction that. documents right now. Um, but we've had the CM uh, provide a DD estimate to this point. So at the end of the slide, we'll, we'll show some dates for marching our way through. But this slide just showing progress. We've been working since last, late last summer, um, like John said, with the visioning, working through, meeting with staff, walking buildings, and uh, getting our way to where we're at. Well, you'll see uh, the presentation tonight. Great. Thank you. Um, we are thrilled to be here, and I'm super excited to talk about project number two with you. So thank you. Um, if there's anything, any questions you might have, let's make this an open dialogue. Let's kind of get that back and forth. Also, if Phil gives you a break, or if you get a break during the, maybe after we present, um, or at the end of the meeting, we have finishes over there. So those are all the interior finishes. I think um, it's really nice to see those in person and kind of tell the whole story. We'll have renderings and elevations and stuff like that, but until you see it in, in person, like the samples, it really helps tell that story. So feel free to pick them up. We're going to leave them here. Take them home if you really want, if you like it in your house, right? No, you never will see them. That's okay. And President Johnson said we can take a, a brief break when we're done with this so you, that you can Perfect. just walk them through yeah. these. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's get you started. We're going to get you situated at the site plan. Um, just for your sake, uh, north is up on this on the site plan as well as the floor plan that we see next. So, so newer, sorry. No, nope, that's all right. I was getting there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Newburgh is there on the right side. That's our north-south. And um, Joy Road, I believe, is south. And then we've got Ann Arbor Trail mm -hmm. up there. Um, Churchill High School is across the street. I think, yep. do you understand? OK, great, right. great. And then as you walk in here, the blue area is the existing building. So that's the existing Career Technical Center. And then that's also down there, that blue rectangle. That is the mechanics garage down there. Mm -hmm. And then the green is the addition that we're adding on to this. So this starts to hug that building. And what's so great is that it starts to skin the front there. Yeah. So as you're driving by, this will sparkle. And you'll just be like, hold up. What is that? I want to see that. I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So that's like the really exciting portion. The addition there, the green area, is about 19,000 square feet. So that's what's adding on there. Uh, renovations will be made to the existing building on the inside. Also, some of that gray that you see, those are the parking spaces. We're adding parking through here, so about 30 spaces there. We also will have some um, drive up there north of the addition, which will allow for the robotics to bring their truck. I know they've got a lot of stuff. Back it in towards a garage door that opens, and then they can kind of tuck that truck back there. We have the forest over here that kind of, you know, will hide that and that can stay over there. Okay, we can go to the next one. And this is the overall floor plan. So the north there is a robotics, and that will be the high school robotics field on the northeast and the northwest is the The middle school field and I'm sure Chris will kind of walk us through when we get to the renderings to kind of get you inside of there 
That yellow portion there, again, that goes outside of the existing, um, that's a, a, a shared space among robotics and the entire program, everyone else in the building. So everyone will get to use that beautiful space. There's a lot of collaboration in there. Um, student Commons collaboration will have furniture there for lots of different uses. So there may be groups of students, five, six, seven, that pull over um, a marker board and they can kind of talk there and then have a, a TV like this and kind of cast to that. But then there may be some furniture that's kind of a one-on-one -on -one where they need to sit down have that quiet time and talk. So that can be used by everyone in the program, everyone in the building. Also those two classrooms north up there, that will be able to be used as a flex class as well for everyone in the building. The renovated spaces are colored in here. We really were trying to group together um, some of those um, um, programs. programs, thank you. So you know, fashion was split up into two groups two rooms and we've put them back together that's that pink <clears throat> pink area there so we're really trying to get those combined together to kind of make a little bit more efficiency and kind of get all those kids grouped together medical there. was another one that was right. separated yeah. now you can see they're all in the general same area yeah and the large group room also which was further north before and now we brought it closer to the entry and we uh, created that corridor along the east that allows you easy access to those rooms where before you had to kind of wind your way around into that large group room, which was is used by uh, all the programs for different functions, uh, like shows and um, also for the staff for meetings. So this is the current, uh, oh sorry, I don't know if you can hear. The, uh, this is the current exterior of the L LCTC building. Um, and, and like we said, it's kind of, it's a little bit nondescript. We don't have that many windows. Um, it's kind of hard to see it from Newburgh Road. And so the, one of the things we tried to do with this um, renovation is kind of create a new front door for the, for the building and really kind of represent the high tech and uh, cool things they're doing inside with a more high tech and cool facade. And so we brought a lot of glass to the front of the building and created this screen, uh, mesh screen that can have some branding on it that will announce the name of the building, um, the Career Technical Center. And it also uh, ties together the uh, automotive construction trades building with the uh, main building. Currently they have a uh, a small canopy that sort of connects the buildings, but it doesn't really wrap around to the door. So that um, canopy will co connect the two buildings together so that you can get from one building to the other without being exposed to the weather, yeah. You, you, you will be outside. Rain. Well, you'll be outside, you'll but. You'll be covered, okay? They're, they're, yeah. they're not right here. an enclosed hall, but you will here. be covered now, whereas currently you. you got to make it more cohesive. Yeah. Yeah. It'll look more cohesive. It's beautiful. I love Still repurposing the entry. So that is one thing that we did is that we'll be relocating the sign and we'll be painting it to match the new um, exterior, but it'll be maintained at the front door. So this is just another image from the um, as you're approaching from that sidewalk out front, seeing the the mesh screen and the new entry. Um, so then if you go to these next few images, we'll, we're going to kind of go through a, a video walkthrough later, but these images will kind of prep you for what you're going to see in the video walkthrough. This is a, um, and you also see in the little key plan down at the bottom, there'll be a little blue box of the room that we're in. So this is the new large group collaboration room or large group meeting room. And again, it'll be used by the LCTC staff for meetings or um, they'll have like fashion merchandising shows in there and sometimes the medical um, programs will use this space. So. We brought it again, brought it closer to the front door, so it's a little bit easier access. And again, uh, access now from that new corridor along the front of the um, the building. It it is smaller than its current, just to just to be clear. Slightly People smaller. Really shocked. That, that yeah. it, it is a bit smaller. I want to say it's about three quarters of, of what it was, yeah. something around and that. But but it's it's also moved, so it's not exactly what it 
what it was, right? So it's, it's all a little bit different, but size-wise, it's still got a, a good chunk of space for them. Uh, speaking with uh, Mr. Harper and some of the folks over at LCTC, that, that percentage, like, yes, we can still do the things that we do uh, with, with that much space. But it was certainly something that in one of the early, early drawings, it had pretty much gone away, and it said, we, we really do need that. It's something that our programs use, our kids use. Yeah, and that was, it was allowed for more um, program to be given to the medical um, portion. So um, then we're walking down the hallway further into the student commons. So this is that flexible area that can be used uh, by LCTC staff or uh, our students for like breakout um, group study. Uh, you can plug into those TVs and present on those TVs. Also kind of replacing the student lounge function that's currently um, uh, in board in the building, which will now be repurposed as storage. This is going to be right on the, the glass, so kind of a little bit of a nicer area to lounge if you're going to be a student. Um, as a reminder to the folks, I know everybody here knows this, but for the folks at home who may not be as familiar with the Livonia Career Technical Center, these are our 11th and 12th grade students. So we're, we're talking about 17, 18 year old students. Uh, they did have a, a lounge, an enclosed lounge previously that went away. So this is a much more sophisticated um, looking lounge space that could be both uh, collaboration for working in class or simply just taking a taking More a collegiate break. prep, mm -hmm. yeah. world, yeah. real world mm -hmm. space yeah. prep. Yeah. And then in the evenings it can be used by the robotics program for uh, further uh, breakout space for their different teams that they have. One of the jump there. one of the tenants of this right now is talking about you know, project one with regard to some of the tenants of the LMC and what we wanted to, to have happen. One of the tenants uh, here is that the flexible space, going back to one of the first slides or one of your first pages, that the yellow portion that was all new, those two flex classrooms and the entirety of that addition, that is the the space between the robotics building and the current LCTC building, which is that shared space. That means it's you know. During the day, it can get used by our, by our LCTC students, but needs to be cleaned up and kind of put back together. And it's also welcoming the robotic students to use it if they come in the evening. But when they're done, you clean up, you put everything back, and it's fresh again. So that every day, it has that flexibility to be used. And then there's there, you know, the LCTC space still proper that will be just LCTC. And then there's the robotic spaces that you'll see in a little bit that will be just robotics so and then this again the middle would be that flexible use by everybody and we even envision um, some of our some of our younger students that are in our project lead the way program maybe coming by at some point you know, just ideas we have those flexible classrooms get a visit visit the LCTC visit the robotics program you know hang out in this space a really cool field trip for them to get them excited for STEM and career technical education So this is an image of the robotics field. Um, this is where they have a full-size practice field, um, and it can be used um, throughout the, uh, the, the year for um, testing the robots. And I, um, Livonia has hosted many uh, other teams to use this practice field. Not every um, robotics team has a practice field like this. So um, they have been able to kind of uh, use their spaces as a kind of a bridge to connect with other teams. And so this is just another view coming the other way. Um, and you can see that uh, we have a large projector, projection screen on the one end. And then on the, the near wall here on the right side of the screen, those are also nano walls. So we're kind of tr keeping on trend with the <laughs> project one. And so those um, can be opened up and opened up into the hallway there. So. Um, helping uh, flow of traffic when there's a, an event or uh, a lot of people in that space so that you can really kind of connect that um, space open to the, the corridor. And then on the classrooms that are also um, on the other side of the hallway, they have a nano wall also. So that really makes that flow um, from the classroom into the robotic or field um, seamless. So here's an image of one of those flux classrooms. So there's a nano wall between the classrooms and then a smaller nano wall on the corridor side. Um, so these, again, like Phil said, would be used throughout for LCTC throughout the day as classroom space and then by the robotics team at night for some of their cleaner activities like programming and design. 
Um, and again, uh, with those nano walls, you can really be flexible in how they are used uh, both at night and uh, for robotics and, uh, and the, during the day for LCTC. Yeah, that's a good amount of space right there once you open that up. You're talking about two classrooms yeah, it's becoming, about becoming one. And we also do have uh, some technology in those rooms as well. So for both, um, both programs, util utilization uh, really just opens up your options. And Phil, the, the robotics field, I'm assuming that's flexible depending on um, the, the specific type of competition that that uh, occurs each year. It, it obviously changes, so yeah. this is going to be flexible enough yeah. for them to accommodate. Yeah, that. we worked with uh, the robotics directly. Uh, yeah, directly on figuring out how to make that space work so it's flexible for year-to-year -year competition. Okay, great. That included utilities as well. No, the outside yeah. Yeah. It's just the inside yeah. configuration. And yeah, we had um, the the program lead, uh, Ms. Carlini, as well as members of our uh, mentor and business partners um, who met uh, with us. And uh, Mark, you joined us as well. Mm -hmm. Liz, you joined us as well. <laughs> I see they've already got 24, 25, and 26. Yeah. Uh, we're going to continue to do well into the future. Yeah. They just had a big weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the robot number for, uh, for the Warriors and for Tyros. Oh, gotcha. And they don't change those numbers? No. No. Oh, okay, very good. Learning a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you have great questions. <laughs> These these colors um, are. Back to the presentation. Oh yeah, we're gonna go back to the presentation. Yeah. The, the, just so you know, these these colors are chosen colors. So the, the pops that you see are. Oh, are, the pops. are the pops. Yeah, which uh, really kind of stands out. They, they, they Love a it. Look. Love it. Yeah. Really good look. Yes. Yeah. So the next image you're going to see is of one of the the high school robotic workshops. It's the. Um, it's there's uh, well it's actually on your plan it's called the robotic studio um, and it's more of like a kind of a semi clean uh, space where they're going to be assembling the robots um, the space uh, to the north of that is called the robotics workshop which is like the extremely dirty space which is where they will be cutting metal and wood and um, so uh, those are, we keep those separated um, for obvious reasons so the, but this space is more open and flexible for uh, like I said assembly of robots and the one thing that um, is nice about this space compared to their current space is that everything is um, next to each other where before you're kind of winding through hallways um, but now you really have that collaborative nature where everything's together um, and also for just ease of getting robots from one place to another. Um, this next image here is the middle school ro robotic studio. It's about the size of three classrooms so each team will have about a classroom's worth of space um, and kind of having a more flexible open space where you can have um, uh, whiteboards dividing their them into their own areas but um, still having that uh, ability to have a big open space so when they set up their practice fields that they aren't um, kind of separate like they are now. I want to linger here just for a second just talking about the finishes really purposefully having that feel of different um, different finished spaces with the the metal the black metal um, having that iron feel, having the, the wood on the, on the ceiling, that's really the deck of the, of the roof, having the white, and those are actually metal um, panels, the, the, the paneling on the walls, having them all mixed together, and then that, is that at least LVT on the floor in this space, right? Yeah, right now it's either uh, LVT or sealed concrete. I think there's still an alternate. We're, we're still yeah, the, with the other. So just, just or, uh, really thoughtfully concrete. bringing together a space that gives a bit of an industrial feel, mm -hmm. but also just a really sharp looking high tech. Um, yes, yeah. high tech space that looks like some businesses out there. It looks like some some engineering firms that you do some work in. So that was really part of the goal that we asked the TMP to, to come up with, not just the space, but finishing the space in a way that, that gives it the appropriate you know, gravitas mm -hmm. and feel of, of what's being done in there. I'm guessing the flooring would be easy to clean, wipe up. There's yes. a lot of metals. Well, again, yeah. it's yeah. either going to be the LVT or it's going to be yeah. polished concrete, Wait, one of those two. Luxury vinyl tile. Luxury vinyl tile. tile. The, oh, yeah, so, okay. so it's durable and uh, strong and made for you know, working on okay. sweeping up easily or washing it down easily. Yes. 
So uh, there's just a couple more images. These are some of the existing spaces within the LCTC. Um, this is just uh, we're touching a couple of the medical classrooms and just updating the finishes, um, uh, making the spaces a little bigger, uh, giving them a little bit more storage. Um, so this is just an example of one of those spaces that we're um, touching in the existing building. The next image is of a uh, medical sim lab, which is kind of a, just an upgraded version of, of like um, uh, a hospital room setup. So they'll have the ability to um, simulate what it would be like to be an actual hospital hospital room with um, an actual head wall that will, I should say, simulate a head wall, which will have actual power, but simulated vacuum, simulated compressed air. Um, so the um, the students will have the ability to feel like they're in a hospital room. So there will be five beds for the hospital setup and two um, beds for an exam room setup, more like a doctor's office. One of the um, items that we, again, uh, tasked the TMP with was, was our medical programs are by far our largest programs at LCTC. So very popular. Uh, all our programs are popular, but they're certainly just from a pure head count. Um, you know, more, more students getting into the medical field. And uh, they previously were not only somewhat separated from each other in the building, and then now they're brought closer together, but they also had their own little spaces with a couple of beds in them. Now we've got this sim lab where, you know, as, as Chris mentioned, we're going to have five hospital beds, two um, more of the, what you, what's the word I'm looking for, just the, the examination beds, which are right. a little more traditional, smaller, like if you go to your doctor's office type thing. And um, we want to prep it with, you know, the ability to, for LCTC to grow into it as well with regard to future purchases of technology, et cetera. So we actually just met last week with uh, Mr. Harper and, and one of the medical teachers talking about this specific space. And it's something that they then would all share, it to, you know, together. So it's a really, we're excited by this. We think that the students are going to benefit by this because, again, it's an important program. It's a growing program. It's our largest program. And something like a sim lab in, in the midst of all the, class, the medical classrooms really seems like a powerful educational experience for our, for our juniors and seniors that are running through those programs. Where's our new uh, simulated cadaver going? The new simulated cadaver? Uh, I don't know how they, they, I know that they have the CPR Cadavers, but uh, no, the, the one that they're, they're bringing in a couple oh, weeks. Yeah, well, right. new oh, yeah. oh, you know what? Actually, cool. we'll have to ask Mr. Yeah. Harper that. Do you happen to know what, what yeah. is that going to go in the sim lab? The new cadaver Just that we're getting? Yeah, it'll go in the sim lab. Okay, thank you. I forgot. Like, totally oh, oh, it, Gary. So <laughs> exciting. Yeah, yeah, very cool. We're well, also, <laughs> Gary, we named it Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> since, we're, since we're talking about programs, we, we kind of went, went through it quickly on an early slide, but we do have um, uh, criminal justice is another popular program. We currently have uh, one classroom for it. This allows, are we going back to it? Yep. Allows a, a second classroom uh, for it. So you can see the two dark green spaces oh, yeah. in the southeast and the uh, north, I'm sorry, southwest and northwest corners our two uh, spaces. You know, Mr. Harper had, had said, you know, I, I really want to be able to offer more sections, but I obviously need more space. So kind of the, the reconfiguring to get a second classroom in there is an important piece also. And then fashion had moved mm -hmm. from that northwest corner, which was a mm -hmm. long skinny room where now they scoot two over into that pink room. It's bigger, so we're still setting it up so that they have partial carpet, partial tile, so they can work on the tile spaces. Uh, and and the, the teacher is, is pleased that she can now spread out all the, the functionality that they have. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we went backwards. My apologies. I think that that was our last uh, image. So yeah, we can go on to the, the video walkthrough. We're going to have a video uh, walkthrough of it. Just give give us a moment to get the laptop set up. Yeah. Um, so what you guys had kind of talking about field trips and stuff. Um, I'm imagining, like, with the robotics lab and stuff, that, like, we could bring the kids over and set up the robotics lab. You know, for, so we sometimes we kind of scrounge for transportation to, to get the kids back and forth or... Sometimes, you know, we're not able to pull a bus to be able to move the kids back and forth mm -hmm. just with the timing of the bus runs and all that. Um, 
are we considering maybe having a LCTC bus or some or something so that we can make this happen for these kids for the you know for the younger kids I can see you know them taking a field trip over there to hang out in the robotics lab and to, you know the the somebody can run the robot and like and give these kids those experiences during the the school day yeah so right you now what we what we have struggles with you're correct is at certain times of the day yeah, yeah so yeah. Um, it's not a matter of needing a separate LCDZ bus. We actually okay. have more buses in our fleet than we than we have oh. routes. That's for, for backup in case something, you know. But it's really more about the timing, and we can accomplish moving students like around the to district. One. For, yeah, through a large chunk of our day. Okay. It really is getting our main runs done in, in that early morning and then getting ready in the late afternoon. But yeah. we have a large window in the, in the in the middle of the day that we can get, get students okay. back and forth. So I think okay. that's just... A combination Logi of uh, bringing the heads thing, together yeah, and yeah. saying, you know, LCTC, robotics, middle school, etc. How do we want to, you know, time this out and do it, and then we can make it happen because we do have a pretty good window in the middle. Well, so as far as from a transportation a standpoint, a lot of terrific programming mm -hmm. um, at LCTC, and you've seen a lot of it. But from you know our um, all of our programming to be able to bring our middle school students over to see the construction trades program, mm -hmm. to be able to oh, see yeah, the, the criminal automotive. justice program, yeah, to be able I mean, to see uh, the computer labs and the, the design mm -hmm. that we're doing there, to see the fashion merchandising. And so um, one of the things we're hoping to be able to do is to just have some of those opportunities for especially our middle school students to really yeah. think about um, their, their path forward. Um, and what that might look like and trying to capture their interest at either the upper elementary or the middle school level so we can get them thinking about it. They may not be able to attend there until they're a junior, um, but we'd like to get, get those wheels turning a little sooner. Yeah. And, yeah. and I know that Mr. Harper and the other teachers over the, uh, at the Lewandia Career Technical Centers would, would probably love the opportunity to talk about career pathways and yeah. what you might need to do in ninth grade and 10th grade you know, at Stevenson, Franklin, and, and Churchill to, to, to kind of to be on that there. career pathway yeah. to, yeah, to, to is it, yeah. is it criminal yeah. justice? Is it medical? Is it automotive? The, Mr. Martin, Mr. Tim Martin's here with us this evening, and to step into to his building trades space, I mean, first of all, it's immaculate. It's amazingly immaculate and organized, and to see what they're learning, just every person should should know how to do the items that, yeah. that, that, they, that they learn in that class. So it can be a very exciting, eye-opening item for a, a, a 13 year old yeah and I think also able to get the kids over there is our high schools as much as we talk about you know career and readiness and uh, you know that there's post-secondary mm -hmm. education that does not all always mean that it's the typical four-year absolutely mm -hmm. college mm -hmm. path that still I think we uh, the day-to-day -day interaction and and way that things happen in the high schools, I don't think that are in the middle schools as well. We don't necessarily like get to see that kind of stuff. Where like to get them to feel like while there are other opportunities out mm -hmm. there, I think in the in the main buildings where as much as we talk about it, there's still a lot of focus on you know college preparedness and just the tracks that we have but to be able to get the kids into this building and have it look have it look like cool like mm -hmm. you know that that we're not taking them to somewhere that's you know kind of just oh this you know it's a, this is what my feet yeah and having, having worked there it's, there it's a cool place it and, really and is no 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 I, I know I once you the get there once you cool. get there mm -hmm. but I'm saying right now when you walk into the building it doesn't necessarily give you that cool vibe of you know it it's you know it's this i think will give you know the kids that opportunity to be able to be like wow you know there are, there are some other avenues out there for us and absolutely so, and, and I, I, I know the program is great oh, yeah. I, i'm just saying this is this is just <laughs> taking it you know the programs to the giving it the maybe the it, you know it deserves this i mean it's cool stuff so very exciting any other comments or questions we're going to do the fly through yeah oh great uh, mr jarvis do you have any images of the um, robotics workshop the dirty area 
I did not do an image yeah, of the dramatic workshop, but I, I can work on it for you though if you want to see it. Like yeah. We can, yeah, because it's mo everything's it's modeled awesome. and yeah. <laughs> it could be presented, so yeah. It was too messy. You couldn't <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, yeah, we. Clean it up in time. All right, ready to take a look? Yeah, let's do a fly through. There's some music to this also. So. <laughs> He's a robotic oh, student. He's going in. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions that anyone has? Just no, great. Right. Yeah. Ready to get it built. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I, know, I, don't have, there you go. I never have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to say I know that we talk about, in general, the great things that are happening at LCTC all the time, but this shows that we truly value what is taking place there, and the students will feel that when they physically arrive there. So, so much better than I was <laughs> trying to join you through. So like, kudos. Um, we're excited, and we don't go there every day, so I can yeah. only imagine how the students will benefit and the staff from this improvement. Thank you. Mr. Harper, do you want to share anything? Mr. Martin? You know what? Um, yeah, we're very, very excited to see what, what's going to happen here in the next, uh, starting uh, this, this uh, digging the, not the trench, but the uh, foundation. 
the retention pond or you can see okay. they, they're marking stuff now and yeah. everything is starting to get moving you know there's stakes here there's uh, there's surveyors there's everything so it's uh it's it's a it's a really really exciting time right now so yeah uh, thank you all for letting us do that and to you know let us do what we do best with the kids and um i was just i was just i, I would love to have kids come over I, it's, it's a great idea what Tammy was talking about bring them over um that, that's what it's all about it, it's how we're going to recruit you know case. how we're going to make make this new venture work yeah. you know and so i'm uh, very very excited about it Thank you. Mr. Harper reminded me of something that, that we are doing the retention pond, the retention pond in the front of LCTC. For those of you who are familiar with um, that large grass area, the Churchill Band traditionally practices there. Uh, they, I've been working with them for a while now and we're moving them back into Churchill. The, the new band director uh, is actually excited to, to, to stay on Churchill property and we're gonna work with them to, to to find a spot, so uh, moving forward, they they won't be practicing, they, which is which is probably nice because they won't have to come across Newburgh, right? They'll they'll stay at their there is a nice large space, um, but it's going to now need retention in that in that area. So been working with the principal, athletic director, and and the, the band director over at Churchill to to get him a spot on on property. Just a little heads up. Yeah. On the topic of retention pond, um, I know we have some retention ponds at some of the buildings. I mean, that sometimes look a little unsightly, I'm sorry to say, but will that, do you think that's going to impact the look of the, the building, the retention area? It, it should and be I only mostly say to that because I've seen a few areas uh, that are very the, sightly. The grass, right? It's mostly on the western portion. It is a pretty deep space that field it's mostly to the western portion of that front rectangle um you know it, it is a retention pond yeah. it's meant to be a natural item that that helps slow drainage okay. it is environmental we are required by by wayne county for the, those items um and certain species need to be be in them all in all though it's not going to be on the curb at newberg it would be on the western portion of that front so okay. um, I, I I'm hope, not going to promise just, exactly what it no, looks like. I know, like, I, I know. know especially in the saying, winter, it gets I've a little, seen some, little rough. I know we can't help it. Uh, specifically, I know at Stevenson, we've had some issues. Yeah, we've had some issues with the retention mm -hmm. uh, areas, and they're not as, I, I get that they have to mm -hmm. be um, uh, natural, yeah. but sometimes. We're just going to blame the engineers. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm presuming that requires to be fenced as a mm, retention pond. Not necessarily. I don't know if this one is. How deep they are. Yeah, okay. not necessarily. I don't know if this one is or isn't going to be. I, and I don't know if we even know yet. No, I don't know if that's been established. That's something we can visit further as it gets developed. But Yeah, um, if, if it's shallow enough, yeah. you know, if the bank is shallow enough, then you don't have to. That would be the best. Okay. Putting a fence around it just calls more attention to yeah. it. I, I promise it, it we, they were informed of the six mile retention pond, so okay. it, it was discussed and we are trying to keep it off Newbury as much as possible. So okay. we'll, we'll right. keep that in mind, as, okay, but it is something we will need. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, we're going to take a uh, just a five minute Again, break or so uh, so we can review some of the materials that uh, uh, they brought for us. So uh, we'll be off and we'll be back shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you, and uh, we are back. And at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Francis. Thank you, uh, Vice President Johnson. I do want to loop right back. Um, that was an excellent, excellent uh, from both French Associates and TMP. It's a lot of fun. It took a lot of time. Um, I know that uh, it's time well spent, though, just because, you know, for, for the board, for the community, the folks out there that want to see, you know, what exactly is going on, I think that was a pretty good showcase of, of what's going on and, and, and what's to come. So thank you for your time on that. I do want to bring it back. Are you going to bring the actual um, yeah, slides the PowerPoint up? back up. Okay. And it was off of yours, yes. I believe. So um, we're going to bring the PowerPoint back up. We have a couple of slides that we want to review just to bring the board up to date on the um, on the project. We have not gone out to bid yet. So we, we do have some, some budgetary updates, et cetera. So um, if we can get the slide back up, is it, is it on? Let me make sure my computer is Okay. We have done this before. Yeah. Yep. No, this is live, everybody. This is, <laughs> in case you're wondering, this is all live. <laughs> all right. And we'll click through. So um, I can break the news to you. So we have two slides left, the budget and the schedule. So um, looking at budget-wise, um, this was put together almost two years now. Um, we are at $5.6 million. Um, the design after um, multiple iterations and, and meeting with the team, um, the design that we, we felt needed to hit the programs that we saw came in at $8.6 million. So there is an overage of $3 million right now. Um, plenty of conversations, plenty of meetings discussing um, how we can get it back into shape. Um, we did actually come down from where we were at before, but um, meeting with staff, meeting with the district, we, we could squeeze this down to a budget, but it would not check the boxes. Mm -hmm. it, it would be an addition on the building, but it wouldn't serve the needs of this building. Mm -hmm. We need the square footage and robotics, and we also need to do some work inside LCTC proper. So in order to move what we've done inside LCTC to bring the, the, the medical programs together, to add that sim lab, to uh, create, uh, we didn't really create it, but to, 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 to uh, renovate the, the classrooms for um, fashion merchandising to be moved, uh, to, to swap out one of their labs, et cetera, and to have the second classroom for criminal justice, we, we had to get in there. And to redo that vestibule, the only way to get the flow to work properly and still have a secured vestibule was to, to rebuild a new vestibule in a different area, right? Moved over a little bit into the main office side. And to build that whole corridor so, and that then, leads into and then that the whole front, yes. flex space yep. and the, the, yep. front, the front facade. Yeah. It, so It looks like a showpiece yeah. because it is. Right, and so that's why it's exciting to look at and to say, this is something that someone that drives down Newburgh is going to say, whoa, what, you know, what, what is that? And that, that's, it's not just that being the goal. The goal is also then to have the appropriate facilities for the students to be able to, to compete, to learn, to grow. And I think with this design, that's what we're aiming towards. We're looking at that flexible space in between to be used both day and night by both programs. We've, like I've already talked about the classrooms with the medical and the other classrooms inside LCTC proper, and also the size under, under the you know, very close uh, collaboration with the robotics folks, the mentors, the coaches, and, and the supervisor of the program to say you know, what space is the right amount of space, who we bring in over here, and let's make sure that we don't open the doors and five minutes later, we're, we, you know, we don't have we've what, we, what, we, you know, what we've needed. So we really had to make that commitment to say, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. And this is, this is our future. And two other points. In, you've heard Cressa talk about it in previous meetings, but the construction market right now, we're up 20% in the last year. So that these numbers reflect. Um, Clark did update the price after we received our, our pricing from Project 1. So these are fresh um, within the last month just to make sure we're capturing those unit prices. Um, and then one other factor in there, we, we've been eyeing on the sinking fund, a new water main. It, it's known to be aged. Mm -hmm. We captured that in this project as well. Mm -hmm. So we did, we did gain some scope in it that accounted for some of those dollars, which is significant site work that we knew would be on the property. There was no reason to push that off and do it at a later date. We have the site torn up, we, so we captured it. So there's, there's other factors in there that, that caused this. It was not just mm -hmm. looking at it, making a showpiece because we wanted to. There, there, we tried to make it most efficient as possible, but also make it worth its while. Mm -hmm. Comments or questions? I would right. just say that there are there are some really great things in this bond. Um, some of them are more utilitarian, and some of them are meant to really show off Livonia Public Schools as a destination district, and this is one of them. So I, I think skimping and 
losing a lot of the what makes this project exciting and magical um, would be a shame. So I, I know it's gonna we'll have to, some tough decisions down the road with budgets and um, how we're going to uh, maneuver these. But overall, I think it's appropriate. Yeah, and we really um, are, are thoughtful about how to utilize um, some of our sinking fund dollars, how to utilize, um, as you know, we've talked about utilizing some of our ESSERS funds to be able to support some of our mobile device purchases, which frees up some dollars in sinking fund. You know, taking care of some things like the water main out of the sinking fund allows us to take some pressure off the bond. Um, and so we are working very, very closely, certainly, uh, Mr. Francis, Ms. Smith, and I, along with Plantmer and Cressa, to continuously um, look at this. We look at this on probably, you know, a weekly basis. Um, and that, you know, we'll continue to have these conversations, and part of it really um, is the pressure on the market right now. Great. All right. Uh, we have one more slide, just one a more. quick one, just show on timeline of, of our events coming up here, and everybody can understand when to, uh, or how we're working through the design process and construction. So starting where we're at right now, the um, board presentation, obviously today. Um, so we're going to work through, they're getting their construction set of drawings put together. So we'll hit a May bid period for contractors, do our post-bid interviews, um, and then the goal is to be at the, the June board meetings with recommendations for contractors to, to get going on this work. Um, that will lead to more administrative, getting contracts issued. Um, start materials and with the goal of starting site work for the the building addition robotics only in the fall of 22 um, we'll then carry that through the winter then we'll we'll, we'll touch in interiors of lctc proper the current spaces those renovations will not take place until summer of 23. so we will have work on site this year but not inside that building other than some exploratory or infrastructure issues that won't disrupt classes uh, with that said, the goal is to finish both projects in the fall of 23 and get them completely closed out at the end of the year of 23 is, is our roadmap right now. Okay. Pretty exciting. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an aggressive timeline. Any, anyone else? All right. Well, thank you, Brian, for your time. Uh, Where is that? You're, you're, you're stuck. You're stuck. <laughs> for the furniture and stuff? All right, yes. good. Uh, that can, uh, moves us on to item C then, which is purchase of LMC furniture. Thank you very much. Um, I will lead this one off with, this is something that uh, last month we brought just a, a small portion of the LMC furniture for Randolph to the board, and we had said at that time we'll be bringing more coming forward. Um, where we're at right now, and, and I detailed this in, um, in my memo in your packet, and Plant Man Cressa also had in their memo, is that we, we are gonna, going to bring to you um, right now, as of today, a not to exceed number with regard to the LMC furniture. So we've been working uh, via French with NBS for the, the um, cooperative agreements is what they use uh, that, and that fulfills the board's uh, requirement to bid on the furniture pricing. Where we landed with them moving towards this date because we knew we wanted to get it in for, for the March meetings was that NBS had, had selected um, of the items like chairs and tables, et cetera, that are gonna be standard in all the buildings. So we're putting the same type of, of seating and um, those, those chairs for the flexible spaces, et cetera, everywhere. They had given us a price that would be the max price. We have chosen the chair and we've chosen the table. So that already alone has been under what the max price would have been. So we could have potentially have chosen a more expensive chair, a more expensive table. So essentially, our goal, since we have spring break coming up and we have the regular meeting in two weeks, is to continue to work to try to, to, to get MBS to, to whittle down that quote, give us updated quotes. And if we have the final number of what we're actually purchasing, we'll bring that to the board for your, for your approval. If we can't get that done in time, then we will bring this not to exceed number because as we all know, we, we certainly can go under a board approved amount. We can't go over that amount. So we want to be very conservative in, in that. When we do have our final number, it's the right number. So we don't want to, to rush it. If we do have to bring the, the not to exceed, we will. Um, am, am I mm -hmm. cl clarifying, right? So most of it we have, we have chosen, right? We, we know a lot of the soft seating. We did have a, a relatively recent change. I'd mentioned it when we were looking at Coolidge. They had the two flexible rooms and uh, the principal there wanted to not have them be exactly the same with the, the same tables and chairs. So we then swapped out 
the idea to, to pick some of the more um, soft seeding for in there. So little things like that have, have slowed us down to get that final number. But the, again, the goal would be to keep working through to, to, to whittle it down to what is the precise number of what we're going to be purchasing. And this would be for um, the four buildings, not Randolph, and I think there might be a few items at Randolph, potentially, if we had missed anything in the first go around, or, or did we, are we good I with I think Randolph? we only did the, um, the, book, the bookcases we, and bookshelves, so I think this might include the soft seating. There was a little bit of soft there seating last one because of yeah. the same distributor, but with, tying on to Phil was saying, there's, there's options for finishes yeah. of fabric in colors yeah. and patterns. Um, there's different grades of that, so they had picked the, the higher option, but we, that's where we're trying to understand yeah. if it's not necessary, if we get the same warranties, we get the same that, we're not going to go out of way just to spend yeah. on a, a higher end fabric just because it was there. So that's what we're trying to right. work down from right now. Right. The, the cost yeah. like that. In, the, in a compressed timeline of the first year, the designer from French wanted to make sure that she had appropriate options for the buildings. So she was working with finishes that came from, the, you know, the, the, the piece of furniture might be from manufacturer X, but she had Y and Z finishes and, and that customizes it. That cost can come up a little bit. We're going to see if we can, we can get something similar from the same manufacturer, reduce the cost. So that's a little bit of work for us to, to get that. However <coughs> it takes, whether we can do it in the next two weeks or whether it's going to take us a little bit more than that, we want to make sure we work on that to get our final decisions at our, a, a reasonable cost for us. So we, we may be bringing the one million 12,394 number to the board as a not to exceed number, and then that would that would cover us. And that would uh, be the April 4th meeting. That would be the April 4th voting meeting. Phil, I, given that there are supply chain issues and availability issues, uh, hmm. you know, I think I'm very comfortable with you coming with a not to exceed number because we would hate for you to pin something down and then have issues. You know, that's, hmm. I, I think I'm comfortable with that if other people are as well. Yeah, okay. we, we even and know that our our goal, our goal is, is always yeah, to contain absolutely. costs. Right. I mean that that right. is right. you know certainly uh, very high on our priority list. We just want to make sure the durability, the sustainability is there mm -hmm. um, if we're going to shift down. Mm -hmm. and, and we just met. I think it might have been Thursday, late Thursday. Mm -hmm. We had that meeting with um, French and NBS, uh, and we talked about. And even the rep from NBS said, you know, listen, you, you, we've got multiple grades of let's say a seat cushion finish that said. A level two would be appropriate for a school. We priced out a level five just to make sure we were there, you know, and things like that. So we want to get down to what we really are picking for our finishes. And French and, and MBS and Plain Marine Crest and Livonia Public Schools are going to work together to try to get that number in time. Again, just I, I feel like I don't want to over explain. I just wanted to be clear. Usually we, we have it all kind of wrapped with a bow at this point. And on this one, we, we, we don't. But we know that what we're going to do is go under mm -hmm. on that number. Mm -hmm. So um, just to make mm -hmm. sure that we're all clear is we're not changing what we're buying or how much we're buying. Right. We're basically the question is, is what is the finish that's going to be on that? And that's where the right. price range comes in. It's we're not going to have to worry about, you know, backfilling with, you know, stuff that wasn't on the original order. We're yeah, we've got what fun. we're going to order, how much yep. we're going to order, yep. where it's going. Our only question is, yeah. what finish are yep. we going to need? Yep. I mean, literally, uh, the name of the chair is a Bixby. I told them in the live meeting Thursday uh, evening, Thursday late afternoon, that was the one that we were going to choose because we just got the samples in here last week to, to look at them. So they said, oh, well, we, geez, that's already lower than the one that I, I priced out. So those types of things. And if this color and pattern is, is what the school originally looked at, we can try to find one that looks very similar and say, hey, this is the one we're going to use, those types of things. That, that's what we're talking about here. Great. Any other comments or questions? All right. Anything Let's, that? Nope. Did I miss anything in there? Did you have in your packet the, you know, all of the designs in yep. there? Yep. Yeah, just to be clear, this correlates with the presentation you just saw. There, mm -hmm. There's full price sheets in your packet, and then at the end is the floor plan again. But it, it ties to all the LMC mm -hmm. stuff you saw tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to item D, which is move management for the summer, I assume, right? That is correct. Yep. Move management, it really is a, I'm sorry, I have like a thousand pages of furniture. Uh, um, I'll catch up in a second. Um, move management, uh, we, we did go to bid. Uh, with um, our move management, we had three uh, companies that uh, brought 
or that, that came in and, and put in a bid for the move management. Move management, just quite simply, is a moving company to, to come uh, help box up books at the library, to move furniture out of spaces, to put them in storage and, and, and that. Oh, thank you. Um, but essentially what we, what we came up with was three responders, and you do have the, the bid tab in your packet, and we have DMS as the low responsible bidder. Um, we are a little bit, if you look, uh, if you see the other two bids, they, they seem high because they are. Uh, our, our sense is that they had plenty of work at this time. It is late in the schedule. Sometimes companies will come in and say, sure, we'll, we'll bid and we're going to throw a number on it. And, and if you choose us, then, then we're good with that number. That's why it's a little bit higher. It really fit into our budget um, what BMS had come up with uh, on, on what we had anticipated. And they were right in that, in that spot, in fact, a little under. So we were able to also take all three alternates and, and put it all together. So we're looking at $100,215 for, for move management with DMS, and that's our recommended vendor. And we've worked with them in the past. They're familiar with uh, the district, and we're familiar in like their work. And a lot of this is accomplished through hours. We, we, we basically buy a bundle of hours and then can direct them where we need them. All right, any questions? All right, sounds good. Essential, essential thing we have to do every uh, summer during the bond. Yeah, so I would ask for that to also be on the April 4 voting meeting, please. Great. That brings us up to item E, which is pro uh, Project One rebids. Project One rebids, and Brian, I'll actually let you jump in on this okay. to give a little bit more detail on them. But these were some of the items that we had talked about um, previously. Uh, that in the original bid pack that the board had already approved, they were either items that we were uncomfortable with uh, how many bidders we had, or we just flat out had to rebid a specific item. And there were only a few of those. I'll let you Correct. give a little bit of explanation yep. on that, please. So this one was our bid package 2A, just to keep everybody in line. Our, our bid package 1 was our pre-purchase of the HVAC months ago, just to get that moving. Uh, bid package 2 was our main um, bid package for that. This is the three categories that we did not, like Phil said, get enough bidders or zero response at all, so we had to repackage. Um, that included the concrete package, uh, toilet partitions with metal lockers, and then window coverings were the, were the three in this one. Um, same process as before, it was posted, it was a public bid, uh, went through our typical process, um, uh, receiving bids, post bids, and, and checked out with everybody. Um, scrolling back through, all in all, it is on the cover page, we're, we're asking for, or asking a recommendation on a million dollars, ten million, one million, ten thousand, six hundred and thirteen dollars uh, between the three packages. Um, and if you flip to page three, is our typical cost breakout. Um, we are showing an initial budget of $400,000 with an actual um, of the 894. So we came in quite a bit over on this one. Um, one, it is once again a sign of the market. We concrete right now. Uh, we got the zero bids the first time. We struggled. We got two on this one. Um, we not only Clark, Cressa, uh, LPS staff were, were reaching out, but right now the industry with concrete, it, when finding out in other districts, they're getting no bidders as well. So we did get ours. Um, we're working internally right now to understand some of the scope items within that so we can try and work to get some of these costs down if it's something that scope kind of crept on it or if there was any options for um, different design to, to accomplish some of the needs we have with some of the structural needs inside the LMCs that if we if we vary a detail I, I think there's opportunities to save there so we know we're going in high now but the goal is the team's going to work to get some of these these costs down. and Emerson was one that was was a, a bigger number but we're also if you recall from the design we sliced off a corner of that space and we have to support it so we have to do some some uh, reinforcing there mm -hmm. we're gonna have a pillar a canopy and um, you know there's some concrete work in there so it was a little bit if you see the Emerson number on its own it seems what's going on it's really that work that we're doing in the LMC to support it please Brian, what would you uh, estimate so I know we're going to be using we've talked about this a lot yes really take a look at um, bringing the bringing this number uh, back down when do you think we'll be able to provide an update to the board on that um, it would probably be if not April meeting by, by sure in May okay. um, which, which by May we have a quarterly update um, planned already we're coming back in front of you so um, if, we, if we can't get in front of you by in April then then May for sure we'll talk through that because we also understanding some of these came in over budget we, we do have meetings planned internally to to look at holistically budgets and understand um, 
there is owner contingencies to pay for these, but also understand moving forward, understand in scope and what the market's doing, sort of plan ahead and not continually running into walls with, with budget issues. And, and now we're through a, our first round of the projects for, for summer 2022, and we bid out all these items. It gives us a better opportunity to start our budget number from a place of some information, having real numbers, real dollars, real work done in our district in this type of market. So when we say, well, the budget's going to be X, right now in the first year, you know, we were, we had to use estimates from um, other projects that Plamer and Crescent may have been on, that Clark's on, et cetera. And, you know, now we can start to use, all right, well, we know what our furniture is gonna be for these elm seeds. We, we start to get a sense of what our site work and concrete might be at some places. So in, we're hoping to tighten that up a little same bit. Same thing, unit cost of classroom, we, the, the air conditioning at classrooms, we, we had a budget to it. Now we can easily extrapolate what the actual costs were per buildings when we do a Churchill, which was only air conditioning in that building. We could then understand how many classrooms are there in, in budget accordingly moving forward. Mm. All right, any questions right here? All right, that will move us on to item F, which is purchase of mobile devices. Okay, I'm going to uh, bid Mr. Weber a good evening. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for Thank all I'm your gonna, work, Brian. And I'm gonna ask uh, Mrs. Smith to come up and, and join us. Thank you, sir. So we are looking at mobile devices, <clears throat> two different batches worth. We are looking at 2,000 Chromebooks uh, and 60, 68 carts to go with them. And that 2,000 would be our replacement cycle as we have been doing ever since we began with the, the 2013 bond and purchasing mobile devices. We're on that re re replacement cycle. So <clears throat> those 2,000 we are going to get from Presidio, and this is the company that we generally have been, been, been um, uh, procuring them from in the amount of $873,776. And we would be looking to use the ESSER funds. Would that be ESSER 3? That would, well, ESSER. yes, we'll leave it at ESSER. Okay, just yes. ESSER. Don't want to get too confused. So we're looking at using ESSER funds for that replacement purchase. And, and I'll let Mrs. Smith talk about um, what we're doing there with regard to those federal dollars versus our bond dollars and how we foresee that playing out. Thank you, Mr. Francis. I wanted to pop up to talk to you guys. Was uh, the last time we talked about the uh, plans for the ESSER funds? Uh, I know it started back all the way in probably May of last year. Our original intention was to uh, purchase mobile devices about two million dollars this year, and then two million dollars next year worth of mobile devices. As you uh, have just found out, what we're proposing now is just under a million this year. After some discussion with um, Tim Clan as well as the curriculum department, we're tweaking our recommendation. We think we should do a million dollars this year and then $3 million next year. So in total, we still plan to spend $4 million on mobile devices over the next two years. But um, that just made more sense as far as the availability of the devices mm -hmm. and when things would be coming off contract. So. Um, I wanted to pop up to explain that because that is a deviation from what we last mm -hmm. talked about for the ESSER grant. And I can run through real quick what she's talking about with regard to, to um, different models. So currently, the newest Chromebook model is difficult to get and has a very long lead time and is more expensive. Um, what is occurring is that Google, as you know, every four years they say that they are going to no longer support the devices. Mm -hmm. However, um, the way it worked through with our IT department looking into this and saying, well, what's occurring with this new, you know, the, the new model? And what Google is doing is saying the current model that was going to soon be, um, yeah, expiring on its, on its service, they're going to extend that out. So we can, put, not the oldest one that we're, we're replacing, but the, the, the current one. So they're saying, yes, if you buy these, now we're going to do them out to 27. So 2027. So you, you're going to get your full four, even five years worth of, of support from Google on them. Those machines cost a little less than what, what the newer version was going to be. Hence, it's actually under a million dollars. So we saved a little bit of money there, but we're still getting the machines. And it's, yeah, and so the, the, this 2000 actually replaces one of the later purchases from the 13 bond that was an amount, an amount of 2000. We were doing 4000. I think that might ring a bell, like the 4000, the 4000, the 4000. And then we went to 2000. So we're just doing right now kind of a one for one, the model that is going to um, expire, if you will, on the support from Google and replace them with 2000 new ones that are a little less 
dollars per machine, but we are getting the, the extension on the support, if that, that makes sense. And then, um, you know, Mrs. Smith is working on, as she explained, she already explained that she wants to work through with us for funds on that. And so next year, mm -hmm. we'll purchase the new, the new models, model. mm -hmm. and then that will extend out even further. Right. Yep. But yeah. more of them. But more of them. But more of them. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. It, it really, it will not impact um, uh, the usability, it will not impact the access. Um, we'll just space out a bit yeah. how we're going to utilize yeah. them. Instead of doubling right now what we're going to do, the, the plan was always to, to you know, like, like Mrs. Smith said, two million, two million. But why, why double it now and, and get that, that other model when we can replace what we needed to with it, ride it out a little bit, and then get the next model? Please correct me if I'm not remembering this, but I believe this 2000 is actually going to get us very close, if not there, with about being one to one in the building for students. And so we might need a little purchase in the fall again if uh, we get them assigned and stuff like that. And we need a few computers, but this uh, purchase will get us close to one to one in the buildings. And then when we bring that $3 million purchase, the intent is for that to then replace the oldest two years worth of computers. I believe that would be 17 and 18. Yes. So um, that's the, the big picture on that. The, uh, the offset purchase for next year, uh, in, instead of doing two and two, we're going to do one and three. Will next year's also be covered by ESSER funds? Yes. Yep. So mm -hmm. same pot, the, yeah. same total amount yep. over the two years. Uh, just split just up a little delay, yep, split up a little differently. And again, mm -hmm. we'll get the current model with this purchase and then the mm -hmm. newer model with the next year purchase. Mm -hmm. So Stick with me on this one. I've got one memo called mobile devices, but I'm going to ask for two different um, items for the regular meeting. So I would like I would like the Chromebook replacement from ESSER grant funds to be an item for April 4th. Okay. Only. And then I'm going to get to the next one. That'll be a separate agenda item, uh, and we'll just do the two different ones unless you feel like me bundling these two together in one. I think they should be two because there's going to be two different pots of money. Okay, just want to make sure. So, for Jill, Chromebook only, is, will she know? How it's Chromebook done? purchase. Chromebook hmm. purchase only. And then, yeah, and then. Chromebook and, purchase one. one. Yeah. Okay. So and then good. Mr. Francis and I will review we'll, that with yeah, her. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll come up with a better one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the next in the paragraph that I have in my memo to you from your, from your um, packet is that we're looking to buy 8,000 Chromebooks um, through All Covered and it's in the amount of three million one hundred and ninety two thousand dollars and these are for this is from the emergency connectivity fund that's that ECF that you may have heard of for students who need them for home use so no. this is a grant that LPS and, and I think many other districts also have received to purchase mobile devices or any connectivity devices for students who need them at home um, and so the 8,000 Chromebooks is specific, specific to the ECF, which is why I wanted to break this into two different, mm -hmm. two different purchases, okay? And they're even a different model for us, so we can clearly delineate which ones were the ECF machines. Okay? And I'll pop in there, because this is something I'm sure you'll be proud of. So um, this is a grant that we, uh, the IT department, took the time to apply for, and we were awarded these funds. We were hopeful to maybe get 50% funding on the devices, but not everybody took the time to apply for it. This wasn't a formula grant. This wasn't a grant that every district got awarded. This was money competitive awarded. So it's money that we had to submit a plan for, then they approved, and we were happy. This was news that came right before Christmas that we got funded at 100% of our request. We requested 8,000 devices, and they are approving us for up to 8,000 devices. So a big uh, kudos to Tim Clan uh, for taking the time um, and yeah. working that through for us. So Ab what absolutely. a great uh, great thing for our families. Absolutely. And and I mean, there's there's a lot of backstory even with, with trying to make sure um, the machines we're getting and the cost on them and there are some supply chain issues and some increased costs and, and Mr. Clan worked with the company and got that, you know, wiped out, etc. So we're, that, that $3,192,000 number was our original quote that they're going to continue to honor and that comes through the E-rate um, pricing so that has satisfied your, your requirement to bid. That's awesome. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield. Um, what are the distribution, um, who can we give these to, what can mm -hmm. we do with them? Mm -hmm. 
do we keep them in storage and shall we have students that can use them? Can they be used in the classroom? What are our, kind of our parameters for use? There are four families and students who request that they need them and, and our plan would be to um, have them be the home machine for a student. And so then when they come to school, they wouldn't have to travel it back and forth. They would come to school, use the machines that we have in our classrooms and in our carts, and then when they go home, they can log back on to Google Classroom or do you know whatever other work that, that is required of them. And just to pop in, so the idea would be to start at the secondary level um, and open that up to uh, families with secondary students. Again, this wouldn't be something that your kids are just going to come home one day with a computer that uh, families will have to uh, positively elect to have one of the devices. Um, but then if they express a need for the device for home, then they would be able to take one of the devices. And again, this is at no cost to the school district. This is completely coming from um, this grant. So with that, there are some you know, things that pe folks need to be aware of too. Um, adding 8,000 devices to the district w would be pretty difficult to also manage all the IT support that would go along with that. So these will largely be dependent on um, you know, the families to, I'm sure they'll get kind of initial uh, know-how of how the equipment works, but they really are meant to be an at-home device um, kind of uh, supported by the families of those devices. So that was one thing that we talked through, because again, if we were, you could probably set up a whole IT person just to handle the questions potentially coming in for these 8,000 devices, and that's not something that we've budgeted for in our general fund. So that's something that we do want to be. the manpower for. Yeah, for so that's something power. we'll have to be really clear with with the families when they do, um, if they do elect uh, to receive one of these devices. And will they be returned to the school at all, or the expectation is, is that that will be for the student to use as long as they need that? And the idea is for it to remain with the student for as long as they need it. If the student were to leave Livonia Public Schools, say they're a freshman this year, and then for whatever reason has to uh, leave our district, the expectation would be that they would turn in the device. But if they're a freshman, the uh, intent is for them to be able to keep it all throughout their um, their career here. Thank you. So we'll get, we'll give you more detail on that. We're uh, now that we've been awarded the grant and we're bringing this to the board. We'll work through that process again. It's starting with high school and then to middle school and then as far down as, as, as we can um, to provide those. But um, again, families will elect in, indicate a need for that device, um, and then we'll go through that process of distribution. That's great. Um, Mr. Yeah. Bradford. Um, thank you. Is it one device would be per family, correct? Or could there be multiple students and we, multiple devices? Yeah, we, and that's something that we are still discussing okay. as a team to see the logistics of that, because I think, um, you know, not knowing how much the need is out there, mm -hmm. you know, the probably most conservative approach would be one device per family. But I can also see if you've got a couple secondary yeah. students that you're both trying to do yeah. your homework at the same time and maybe two, two devices does make sense. So that's definitely something we're still working through. Okay. Great, thanks. And that possibly, maybe we um, are able to get clearer direction that, that on what we should do once we get those survey results from families on what the need is. Great. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Phil, is there a reason why we're using two different um, suppliers? So the the original um, grant requires the 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 bidder or the low bid company was Minolta Business Solutions, and all covered is a subsidiary of Minolta Business Solutions. So Minolta, I'm sorry, all covered. We actually do quite a bit of work with all covered as is, even when we get Presidio as the purchase of Chromebooks, we have all covered do work on them. They do the setup and the cart, um, set up, et cetera. So we're very familiar with them. They're very familiar with us. But specific to this grant, we had to use their vendors. So we needed to use all covered for the whole kit and caboodle, the purchase of the machine, and they're going to do the setup. OK, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? All right. and. Uh, you, Mrs. Bradford, you got to straighten out which yeah, motions. Yeah, I put down here two separate motions. Yeah, so perfect. I'm sure you'll talk yeah, and then we'll we clean will. up the agenda name, etc. We'll okay. mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, one last item that's purchase of UPS battery replacement. Thank you very much. This is something that we discussed at our um, uh, study session a couple weeks back, and the UPS batteries are for the buildings, not for this building. When it says district, it doesn't mean our district servers, but throughout the district in school buildings, we are replacing 
those UPS batteries, and UPS stands for uninterruptible power supply. All of our buildings have their own tech closet, and those servers and the network that's in each building needs that backup. Um, we bought the original ones that are throughout the district during the 2013 bond. You don't want to wait until they fail to replace them. So just on a timeline, we are, we are preparing to replace them uh, with this purchase, $30,895. This is from Gemtech Group, and it is uh, fortunately E-rate eligible and should get us about 50% of that purchase price back through, through the, through the E-rate. So that's a great thing. Um, just a, a, a quick explanation. If power goes down at a building, <laughs> that network crashes, and when it crashes, if it's not on backup, immediate backup, the crash can be a hard crash and very difficult to bring the systems back up again. So you always want to have that barrier, because even with generators, there's a few second delay between when a power outage occurs and when the generator kicks on. That few second delay is, is the problem. Is that's the, where our issue would come in if we didn't have these UPS uh, backup batteries. It, it keeps it rolling just for the, that brief time so that we don't have a hard crash. Great. Any this questions? would be out of bond funds. I don't know if I've said that already, but this would be out of bond funds. Something that we did set aside uh, in our tech uh, line item. Right. All right. Well, that. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Francis. And I would like that, please, on April 4th uh, voting. Thank you. Mr. Appreciate Johnson. That Everybody, thanks for your time tonight. Concludes. Thank you, Mr. Centers. Uh, <laughs> that That's was a quick one. Quick one, yeah. <laughs> one of our shorter ones. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, so that will move us on to item four, our curriculum committee, and I will turn it over to Mrs. Costa. Thank you, Vice President Johnson. Um, we will start with item A. The Livonia Transition Program and LCTC Cooperative Agreements with um, Dr. Terriel and Mr. Willenborg. Thank you, Ms. Acosta. Um, good evening, board. Uh, Dr. Terriel and I are here again this evening uh, to talk to you about um, our, our cooperative agreements. In accordance with what is allowable through the pupil accounting manual, um, we're here to recommending our continuing involvement in cooperative agreements with surrounding districts with both our LTP program and our uh, career center program. Uh, again, these are mutually beneficial arrangements that allows surrounding districts students to attend classes uh, in our district. And uh, the arrangement is such that, um, you know, for non-LPS students that attend classes in LPS, a proportional amount of the sending districts student funding allocation is redirected to the Livonia Public Schools. Now for the FTC, F, the, for the career center classes, that's approximately 50% of their FTE amount. They take half their classes. With us, we get half their FTE. Um, um, to be clear, all LPS students um, request to attend our career center classes. Those are accommodated first. We don't, we don't bounce any of our kids out for other, other school districts. Um, you know, transportation and special education services remain the responsibility of the sending district. You know, um, and in, in addition, our cooperative agreement with the Wayne Westland Community Schools allows LPS students to attend their classes at the William Ford uh, Center Technical Center. Dr. Terry was gonna speak to the transition program for a moment. Good evening. As you know, this is one of my favorite topics. The Livonia Transition Program services our students 18 to 26 on a certificate of completion. Our program is housed at Schoolcraft College, and we teach students vocational skills in a variety of our local communities. And I just wanted to name all of them that supported our students through COVID and continue to support our students today. So we have students that work at Embassy Suites, Cantoro's Market, Granite City, Goodwill, Ward Church, Hampton Inn, Meyer, Image First, Bigby Coffee, Adat Shalom, Mod Pizza, Mary Bowl, St. Mary's Hospital, and of course, Livonia Public Schools. We currently have cooperative agreements with Northville. We have nine students, Redford Union, six students, Garden City, we have five students, South Redford, four, and Huron, one. Uh, the students are enrolled um, and attend our LTP program 
are recorded in our membership um, for the state aid. And then we also receive an additional $8,000 per pupil from their districts. We have 27 Livonia Public School students um, that attend our LTP program. And over the past five years, we have had 57 students hired for competitive employment. So um, we are very proud um, of this program. Mr. Wollenberg? Wow. Uh, for, the, for the cooperative agreements uh, with the uh, Career Center, we have uh, uh, the agreements are with uh, Northville Schools, Plymouth Canton Schools, Crestwood Schools, uh, Plymouth Christian Academy, and Wayne Westland Schools. And in the past, before the pandemic, we had upwards of 90 students coming at us from those school districts. Uh, this, this school year, it's simply 35. Uh, last year's school year and this school year, numbers are down mostly because of the pandemic and changes of schedules and the like. Uh, most, most of the students we uh, coming at us in cooperative agreements are from Northville. We have 25, Plymouth 3, Crestwood 2, Plymouth Christian Academy 5. Um, um, Dr. Terry and I recommend that this item uh, be on the consent, consent agenda for April 4th. Any questions? I was just going to ask, and you probably don't know these numbers, but is is there, I guess, not a comparable number between the number of our students going to these surrounding districts for their... Um, I'm aware right? of one LPS student okay. that has attended uh, the Ford Technical Center in Wayne Westland. Okay. Now, one different student attending during second semester as well. So mm -hmm. it's very minimal. Uh, uh, they have to provide I know we offer the best program, so yes. why would they go elsewhere? But <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just a question. So. Okay. Um, so that we'll go ahead and put that on for yep. Okay. Thank, for you. The Thank you. Consent, consent is okay. Consent is okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what it's been in the past. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Bradford, you did get um, a yes, copy of my email. We, yes, uh, we did uh, remind all of our counselors about the uh, opportunities through the Wayne Westland schools, uh, through their career center, particularly that firefighting class. Yes, we, we spoke about that at the uh, study, study session, session. that uh, Wayne, the Ford Center has a firefighter program as well as, I think, a mechanics program or something, but two different programs. So thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. Thank you. So moving on to item B, LCTC grant purchase, Mr. Willenberg. Thank you again, Ms. Acosta. Um, I'm joined up at the podium here with uh, Mr. Tim Martin from the from the Career Center, who helped me who helped me uh, explain uh, what it is and what exactly a Teleskid tractor is. You might remember from our study session, I told you we had uh, we're looking at three purchases, um, but it wouldn't know for sure um, if we'd find consortium pricing for all of them. Um, two of them we have not yet, so they're on a regular bid cycle, and we'll present those during the April uh, cycle of Board of Education meetings, so that, that uh, medical table, uh, dissection table, that'll be coming up after the bid process. Um, uh, as well as the trailer will be coming up through the bid process. But we're here to talk about the Teleskid tractor. Um, you know, the, um, as I discussed and shared, it's a, a bobcat-like tractor um, um, that is utilized by our construction trade classes for, for a variety of items to a variety of means, uses, to include site grading, moving trusses, uh, um, uh, uh, large material handle, handling, lifting walls, setting trusses, digging, and debris removal. Uh, it's a, it comes uh, at a, it's being funded, will be funded through 61C, which are grant funds. So it does, it's a purchase that doesn't come out of our, our general fund. It's uh, through uh, monies that are set aside by the state in support of career technical education. Um, we're purchasing this um, through um, uh, construction, um, I'm sorry, the name of the company is Construction Equipment 
uh, Corporation out of New Hudson, and the cost is $111,625.25. And Mr. Martin, uh, did you want, could you help us feel this tractor <laughs> and all of its uh, so, accessories and yeah. capabilities? So traditionally, like, we, we've rented equipment in the past, or students are, and myself, are on deck. We're moving all the materials, uh, setting trusses by hand, lifting walls by hand. And if we don't run a piece of equipment, like I said, we're putting our bodies in that line of work and not all of our students are there to become carpenters or to become builders and the use of equipment um, is good this is specifically this one is going to allow us to um, put our program for at one perspective like at the forefront I don't know I know maybe two other programs in the state of Michigan that have a piece of equipment of their own to use with their students so it's going to allow us to do um, like Dan said, we're going to be able to do all our own grading on site, which is like prepping the soil to be pitched properly, lift trusses without using our students' bodies all the time. Um, part of the curriculum is uh, heavy equipment and civil construction, teaching students how to properly, not only while the machine's running, but how to properly rig materials, how to properly trailer a piece of equipment. Uh, it allows us to do all of that where previously we, we, we could watch a video. So, and it's you know, at $112,000, it's going to last a long, long time, long, long after I'm gone, I'm sure. So um, a great piece of equipment. We're really excited to have it, and it puts us up at the top as far as construction trades programs in the state of Michigan. So any questions on what it does or what we're going to do with it? or Tim, where are we going to house it? So that, that building I that the program built several years back, I have room inside it there with, the, that van we bought three, four years ago with 61C equipment grant, that's in that garage and there will be room for this in there as well. Okay. With all the attachments and everything parked away, tucked away safely. Yes. That's Who will be handling this equipment? So myself and uh, our pair pro for the program, Brian Lester, is, uh, has run his own construction company for years. So, I mean, it's not going to be the kids behind the wheel. There's very little harm that could happen to a the student inside of there, um, we have, but the, but put in there as a, as a risk. So it's it's a lot like um, the they'll be able to sit in there and do like simulations with it. But we have a construction we bought uh, probably five years ago, maybe more. We bought a simulator where the students have full hydrostatic controllers and they can practice on a TV screen, and then they can see it in living color now with this machine on site. So, and I've used them for, you know. 30 years now so there's no there's with that piece of equipment there's no necessary training or licensing or certification like uh, young people grow up on in agriculture and on farms things as soon as they can start driving them they're like they can start driving them. it's not like 16 years old or 18 years old and that's not my point of getting these kids behind it but the, for them to see it and be able to work alongside of it is gonna it's gonna aid the program a lot so especially when the students aren't around, there's a lot of times when it falls on the instructors to move pallets of material. And, you know, like when a, you know, traditional classrooms, you know, moving a stack of papers, I'm moving thousands of pounds of material in, a, in an afternoon by myself. When I can just scoop it up with that and move, yeah. it's going to be a great asset to the, Absolutely. To the program. It's a great machine. Do you want to take a minute, and I know we're not bringing this prayer tonight, but while we have Mr. Martin here to be able to talk a little bit about that, the trailer mm -hmm. and okay, uh, the spray foam rig. The spray, yeah, spray foam rig. So another, the other purchase on that grant when I wrote the 61C grant, there was um, it was fifty nine thousand eight hundred fifty eight dollars for the spray work spray foam trailer, and behind that purchase was teaching the students an individual trade that they can go out and start careers, and that's what I've been trying to break the program down into. So um, insulation is a huge factor in home construction right now and everyone's moving towards spray foam spray foam in their house as opposed to their traditional bat and uh, blown or um, different types of insulation so that trailer is like a standalone classroom where I'm, I can teach the kids that one skill and then they can transfer that into an actual career 
So, and, and, and I, I'm doing the same thing with a lot of different programs as far as um, roofing, siding, uh, insulation now, carpentry, everything's broken down to these uh, units so a, a, a student can look at that trailer for a $60,000 investment into themselves and turn it into a 30-year career insulating homes. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what the, the, that purchase can do that, and that, that'll be something that we'll house on site. We can take it with our partnership with the Housing Commission. We can spray foam all their homes. We can spray foam buildings for the school if there's anything that needs to be done for that. But all our building projects that we do with the construction trades program, from this point forward, we can use the closed uh, cell uh, close cell foam insulation with that trailer setup. And it comes that rig comes with all the safety equipment, every every the compressor, the generator the respirators, the suits for uh, an instructor plus two students to, students to use during the process. So it's a, it's a really good setup. And I couldn't find those two quotes that I got for this grant. Um, like we talked about supply chain issues and stuff. That was one of the only machines coming into the state of Michigan pretty much this year for the telehandler. Mm -hmm. And then the spray foam rig, that was the best setup that I could find that one company that could give us all that stuff in one purchase. Otherwise, we'd be buying a trailer from somebody or buying a used piece of equipment. This is top of the line, one-stop shop. So. Okay. Ms. Jarvis. Oh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to look into this and to write the grant, do the research. Uh, that represents a lot of hours. Yeah. Um, and You're I welcome. appreciate all the work that you've put into it. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. T Tim, is this the... Uh, the spray that's uh, in an open uh, joy situation, it's, it's not like a, a plug-in, it's the one right. where you actually spray it, and it, it's almost like the, uh, the great stuff yep. where it expands. Exactly okay. that product. But you can do it as a retro. There's attachments that or we can, can purchase later to do a retrofit, because we do renovations with the city house. Mm -hmm. So if it, the situation arises, we can buy attachments and blow foam through like you see on the Ace and Sons commercial, right. I don't know if it's yeah. a plug, but um, Ace and Sons commercial where they're blowing it through the walls and stuff after the home's already right. built. But yeah, it's, it's, it blows into an open stud cavity or joist cavity and expands, and then we cut it and then and we dry it off. off. Right. Yeah, okay. it's a really, really cool product. Yeah. Any other questions? This is not, this is for the next year. Right, this is the, yep. With the, with the other medical. Yeah. Right. So, right. Mr. Wilmer, we're going to remember all that and share it again when we, uh, yeah. go, when we come back to the next meeting. But I had, but I had a question. Now, yes. are these credentialed skills that uh, they can students can be credentialed and certified home construction and, and certified? Uh, as the the spray foam one, yes. Right. So they uh, that company offers free training for anyone who buys the trailer. Um, the the tele the teleskid is is not, but yeah. So that is that is one of the skills that you have to put in so many hours on the spray foam rigs to get certified once you're once we get the equipment and get going with it. Um, spray works puts on it's like a six hour course or something that we can attend. So thank you. I just, I just wanted to say thank you um, for also breaking this down in certifiable skills for students um, because it just makes their time there even more valuable. So we appreciate that. So I think, and this puts a lot of perspective too on the earlier discussion of the LCTC and the renovations that we're doing and the types of programs that are housed in that building and why we've placed so much significance on you know, that building and those programs. And I think this is a, a, just one of those programs that is so beneficial to our kids. In our economy. Yes. Yeah, in our economy. In our community. They're going to build yeah. your school. Yes. Yeah. And thank you so much for, for doing this for our kids. It's you're welcome. an amazing program, and like you're to, an amazing teacher. Thank you. I'd certainly so. like to thank Mr. Harper and Mr. Martin for being here this evening, and uh, we'd like to uh, ask you to please uh, include this purchase of the Teleskid uh, uh, on the, as an agenda item for the April 4th meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say, Tim Martin is probably one of the best teachers I've ever seen, and um, I'm just glad that he's on he's on our side, and we got him instead of somebody else. <laughs> Thank you. Dear. Yep. A lot of work goes into those those grants. Yeah, they do.
that takes us to item C, Livonia Virtual 2022-2023 with Mr. Green and Mr. Willenberg. Well, hello there, everyone. How's it going? Good. Nice to see you tonight. Thank you, Ms. Acosta. Uh, so I would like to go back in time to two weeks ago at our study session when we had a discussion on what Livonia virtual plans will look like for next year. And I just wanted to, for the general public who may be tuning in tonight, um, kind of go over the same information. I'm not going to show the slide, a, sh a slideshow, but I do want to cover m much of the same information I did a few weeks ago. So just to kind of go back in time, Livonia Virtual was created during the 2021 school year. You, you, you can recall we had a pandemic on our hands and we were trying to find an alternative educational uh, setting for a, quite a significant percentage of our population at both levels. At the elementary level that year, we ended up having 30% of our elementary age students enroll in Livonia Virtual. And it's important to note that prior to the pandemic, there was not a broad interest to create a virtual school in our, uh, in our school district. So when we went through the 2021 school year, 30% of our elementary students were enrolled in Livonia Virtual. Upon the conclusion of that year, we met with the Board of Education about this time last year to discuss why would we continue to offer LV for the 21-22 school year? Would we do that? And we decided we were going to do that. And the reasons were we weren't sure if the pandemic would be still with us, so we wanted to give that flexible learning option for uh, a portion of our community. And we also wanted to spend some time to analyze, is this a program that we wanted to develop long term for our school district Livonia virtual so we did a enrollment process and as such we collected enrollment uh, for the uh, current school year and we had 110 enrolled uh, students in Livonia virtual that was down from 1823 the first year of Livonia Virtual. So we were happy to offer that this year. We offered at Livonia Virtual at the elementary grades in grades two, three, four, five, and six. And just to give you an idea of what that looked like from a staffing perspective, we had 67 teachers who were teaching Livonia Virtual last year, and that went down to five this year. So uh, for, the, for the community and again for the board, I wanted to emphasize a few things. Uh, there was a need. We met that need. Our staff and our families and our students, most importantly, stepped up in the 2021 school year and we were to provide that opportunity. We uh, uh, had an opportunity again this year. We weren't sure how families would respond. We, we were pretty set that we were not gonna offer Livonia Virtual for K-1 last year based on the feedback that it just wasn't developmentally appropriate for those grades. But nonetheless, we um, were able to offer it in grades two through six. As such, uh, at, as the enrollment progressed, uh, we, we noticed that we weren't going to get the same, not even close to the same amount of students that were interested for this year. And uh, you can see that in not only in enrollment, but our staffing differences. So when we did some research this year and we met with our LV staff, we met with Mr. Traub and Ms. Kohler, and just, you know, in our experiences of what, what's out there in the research, we we try to discern you know, that second bullet. We can obviously see the pandemic's in a different spot, but what about this as a long-term option? What's, what's explaining this drop? And here are some key factors that we came up with. First of all, the, uh, the authentic in-person socialization experiences were greatly missed by our families. Um, this was a lot of feedback we received last year. And quite honestly, they're a key element of the development of the elementary student. We're, as I said earlier, we're in a much different spot than we were in the spring of 2020 and how we can battle the COVID-19 pandemic. Vaccinations, mitigation strategies, and other medical treatments just put us in a, a different spot than we were back then. And when I mentioned those authentic experiences, that included things like in-person activities, lunch and recess, those special days where just being in school uh, just could not be replicated in the, in the virtual setting. Those experiences, quite honestly, that for our own children uh, and maybe our own elementary experiences, we still think of quite a bit to this day. Uh, some other factors resulting in the enrollment drop were what you would read in the educational research. Uh, quite a bit of research has came out uh, in the past year that uh, talks about the elementary student and the need for in-person instruction. Certainly doesn't mean that there's not certain students that a virtual setting does work for. But overall, 
the research is pretty clear based uh, on uh, the in-person elementary experience is the key. Uh, it gives us an ability to authentically observe those students, to confer with those students. There's fewer distractions actually in the in-person environment. Uh, increased motivation was cited. Uh, the ability to have more hands-on learning, which is essential at the elementary ages. And uh, when we're giving assessments, the accuracy that which we're able to see where the learner's at is much more accurate in the in-person setting. And of course, those socialization experiences with classmates. Great efforts have been attempted to provide those socialization uh, opportunities for our virtual students, but overall, just having those in-person socialization ex uh, experiences is key. And then uh, another big key for in-person learning that we miss in the virtual world is the ability to have uh, services for intervention, special education services, and special areas. Those are hard to duplicate in the virtual setting. So all of that from the enrollment drop to the staffing drop to the rationale why we are recommending an in-person experience as the key experience for our elementary students. Our recommendation for next year would be that Livonia schools would no longer offer Livonia virtual for the 22-23 school year. Again, this is based on enrollment drops, the ability to sustain and coordinate a program of low enrollment, the educational research and belief that in-person instruction is the most impactful mode of instruction, and the fact of the difficulty of coordination of services such as intervention and uh, um, resource room support, it's just best served in the in-person environment. So I'll stop there and I have a few other points to make and if um, I'm not sure if there's any questions then I'll conclude with our next steps. Questions? Ms. Bradbury. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I'm probably getting ahead to the next step. I'm assuming, I, I agree, I think we can all probably agree with the, the rationale for um, not continuing the Livonia virtual program. While, while you said it really served a great purpose for during the pandemic and, um, and I really liked the fact that we continued it again this year to see how viable it would be and how valuable it would be and I can see where um, uh, it would necessitate us uh, canceling out the, the program. Um, and I'm guessing I'm getting to the next step. I'm assuming you're going to contact those families and we know that those families have not been in a school building uh, in quite some time and there'll be some type of um, slow transition back into uh, our, our program. That is correct, yes. Okay. And I'll go over those next steps okay, if, if there's any other questions. I was just going to say, um, just we appreciate all the staff that stepped up this year to be able to provide this program for just this minimal number of students and families. And um, we know that that was also an undertaking. And um, just being able to provide that transitional year for these families um, is appreciated. Absolutely. In fact, my next slide before I talk about the next steps is I want to make sure the community understands this by no means. Uh, this recommendation doesn't belittle the efforts of any of our staff the last few years, our families, or most importantly, our students. There's been just some amazing work that has been done the last two years with the advent of LV. Uh, we have remote conferences now. We have Google Classroom. We have many of our staff that served and to serve that 30% have come back into in-person instruction. and utilize technology in ways they may have never imagined if the pandemic wasn't here. So, and we've learned from each other. And so, uh, again, a shout out, thank you, to Ms. Markham, Ms. Kloss, Ms. Paulus, Ms. Backen, and Ms. Sparrow for their efforts this year in teaching Livonia Virtual. Um, and so, as we think about those next steps, it's important to remember one last point is at the, at the um, peak of our pandemic this past winter, we weren't getting requests for uh, folks that are in person to go to Livonia Virtual. That was something I watched real closely is to see, were we going to get a lot of correspondences and we didn't receive any um, asking to go from in person to virtual. So I think that just kind of speaks to where we were headed. Headed in uh, Ms. Bradford exactly the next steps. We have a meeting tomorrow. A correspondence went out last week to all Livonia Virtual families. And we have an online meeting tomorrow with Mr. Traub, Ms. Kohler, and myself. 
And if they can't make tomorrow's meeting, I have two more meetings scheduled on Wednesday to meet with all those families to kind of go over where we've been and where we're going. And then as part of that, Mr. Traub and Ms. Kohler will speak to some of those next steps. We've already uh, mentioned to our sixth graders about the preview nights. They, you know, as we don't have a secondary LV program, they were notified of those preview nights at the middle schools. We have our upper L orientations that are coming right around the corner. And then we are going to work on some of those uh, activities to get them back in the schools for fun events at their home school or some other transition activities. We talked about maybe a buddy day or some other activities. So that's part of our plan moving forward after I meet with the families, address their concerns, because they may have some concerns of uh, what happens next as well. And I want to I wanna be able to listen in these meetings this week and really kind of see where they're at. Um, it's not going to change the recommendation, but I really want to learn from them and maybe not predict completely I know what all their concerns will be. Uh, but one of the things that's I exciting is the transition plans that Ms. Kohler and Mr. Traub have put together and the other principals will be uh, partners in that. One of the things that's also important to understand is even though it's a virtual setting, our Livonia virtual students may have made connections with the Johnson community because that's where the five, six teachers are housed up or the Rosedale community because that's where our second, third, and fourth grade teachers are teaching from this year. So if that's the case and they, um, a parent requests or a family requests to have an intra-district transfer request for Rosedale or Johnson next year. And there is unique circumstances, I would approve those requests because they may have connected. They would still have to follow those same uh, rules of an intra-district uh, transfer and provide their own transportation. But I do want to acknowledge that could be where some families are at moving forward. And so after this week and after we meet with all those families, the months of uh, mid-April, May, and June will really be spent on building those uh, build back plans with all of our students. If, if, again, if you think about it, uh, a third grader in the year uh, 19, I can't even keep track of the year sometimes now, right? 1920, well great, anybody wanna guess they're gonna be going into next year? They'll be going into sixth grade next year. So we have students that have not been in person since they were third graders, and they're going to be sixth graders next year. Did you like that quick on your feet? Sorry, I won't give tests in the future uh, while we're televised. My apologies. But that is, did I say 1920? Oh, there you go. 2021, sorry. Uh, but. It, it, it just goes, 1920, I was correct on the, that we, yes? 2019. Oh, I'm sorry. Nonetheless, they're going to be sixth graders next year. That still doesn't change the he's narrative. 2019 yeah. to 2020. Yes. When he's yes. saying 1920. He was, oh, okay. yeah. So those third graders that left us in March of 2020 to go home for the year are going to be sixth graders next year. So it's important we build those transition activities for them. It's important that we spend some time with their families this week. And, uh, and that's the recommendation for Livonia Virtual 22-23. Thank you. I know that we talked about urging our virtual learners to uh, take advantage of any summer opportunities at their home schools so that they become acclimated with their school environment. Ms. Bradford. Thank you. This doesn't require a vote, but will this be discussed at our regular meeting? No. This is it. This is it. Like Kenny Loggins said many years ago, this is it. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. And this concludes our curriculum committee report. Thank you, Mrs. Acosta. That'll bring us to item five, our finance committee, and I will turn it over at this time to Mrs. Bonifield. Thank you, Vice President Johnson. We have two items tonight for finance. Um, both will be directed by Mrs. Smith. Our first is the financial update. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so this will be not anything new from what we discussed last week at the study session, but I wanted to go over that for the community that's um, tuning in to give an update on our financial picture. So 
Um, as you'll recall, we uh, last brought a budget amendment to the board in December, and it was our first amendment of the school year. Um, we were proposed, or we, uh, or I assumed we would be ending with a fund balance of about 19.3 uh, percent, or 30.5 million dollars. Um, that puts us right in that uh, sweet spot with the Michigan School Business Officials recommendation of 15 to 20 percent. Um, I do have a couple. Uh, items both on the revenue side and the expenditure side that I think um, we should adjust in our final budget amendment. Um, on the revenue side, uh, the first is under our local revenue category. It's an additional Medicaid reimbursement. Um, as I mentioned last week, uh, we typically are reimbursed for Medicaid services that we provide to Medicaid eligible students on a year lag. So for instance, 1920 services are reimbursed to us at the end of the 2021 school year. Um, that reimbursement didn't take place last year. There was a uh, lag in communication, is my understanding, between the ISDs and the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. So in turn, we didn't get that payment uh, last year. So I conservatively thought maybe this is kind of our new timeline for these reimbursements. Maybe it'll take two years for those reimbursements to come through. So in the proposed budget, I only included um, one year's worth of Medicaid reimbursement. But in uh, further conversations with RISA, they see us getting back on track this year. So they um, do plan to make a reimbursement to us at the end of this school year for Medicaid services that we provided in the 2021 school year. So that's the first adjustment for just under 500,000 on the revenue. So that's a favorable revenue adjustment. Another favorable revenue adjustment is on the state revenue side. I'm sorry, I just noticed I misspelled on our sheet. Um, and that's in the form of a categorical, the Section 147 uh, state aid allocation. Um, the Section 147 is uh, allocated to districts to help us offset our retirement costs. And the good news here is this is not the one, this isn't 147C change when the 147C is the one where we have to then increase our expenditures to match the revenue we're getting in that category. This one truly does offset our existing retirement costs that we're incurring. So that is an adjustment of just under 350000 And the last one is overall a small adjustment, but uh, worth mentioning, um, was also a, an additional about $10,000 for a Medicaid outreach reimbursement. And that reimbursement is something that we get for admi administrative staff that uh, work to help identify students that could be eligible for Medicaid and help getting those uh, students signed up for those services. Um, so uh, that would put us ahead on the revenue, um, 832,000, uh, more than what I had anticipated in our December amendment. On the expenditure side, I'm proposing a, a net um, reduction of expenditures of about 112,000, and that's a combination of three things. Um, actually, two increases are the first things. The first increase is in our um, fuel costs, just as we're experiencing as consumers at the pump, the price is going up. Um, that's impacting the fuel for our buses. So needed to um, allocate some additional dollars for gas. Also on the natural gas side um, for utilities for the uh, buildings, we're seeing an uptick uh, there. But those are also those two increases are offset by um, some additional grant funds that are going to cover some of our um, teaching staff costs, so we can shift those expenditures over to that grant. So net looking to be down about a hundred thousand dollars in expenditures. So where that puts us is with an ending fund balance of thirty one point four million or nineteen point nine percent. So again, right in that uh, good cushion uh, between fifteen and twenty percent. Every more good? Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Nope. The next uh, update we'll start uh, talking about in that in May, and then it'll be the final uh, budget recommendation and a proposed budget in June. Okay. So if there's nothing else on A, we'll move on to B, and uh, that was the second document that was provided to you. And that's the LPS merchandise purchase. Thank you. This is another uh, fun purchase, just like our 2021 bond uh, things that we discussed tonight. Uh, this is a recommendation to purchase some LPS branded gear for staff. Um, this, uh, yeah, 
we tried this last year. It was very well received from staff. We got a lot of positive feedback. And so we'd like to do um, something similar again this year. Um, so what I did, I wanted to mention what I've done on here. So last year we had about 1,600 staff members participate in that. Um, knowing how well received it was last year, I wanted to budget for the possibility that there might be more interest in more staff. So what I've included on this quote is the assumption that 2,000 staff members would participate, and that's as that's our total staff is 2,000, so that's assuming everybody does it. Um, and that also uh, follows the quantity breakdown that we saw from this past year. Um, by far the largest uh, uh, item of interest was the jackets. and. I don't know about you, but whenever I visit our buildings too, I see those often too. So it's nice to see people getting a lot of use out of that. Um, so use kind of a breakdown um, based on what the ordering was for last year. Uh, as I bring this forward to you so that when I get, or when I present this for your approval next week, again, this would be a not to exceed amount. Um, I do believe the number will probably come in under that, but I would hate to exceed what, uh, what we get authorized to spend. Um, I wanted to let you know I am working on uh, finalizing the pricing still. As you know, you know our administrative procedures require purchases over 26000 to be bid. Um, and interestingly enough, I've done a lot of research on trying to find the best deal for us. And um, this local company, MBS, is actually beating out even the prices that are on the purchasing cooperative. So I've uh, touched base with our attorney just to see, obviously, the... I think the intent of the seal bids is to make sure that we're getting the best deal for our taxpayers. And um, so I want to work through that with uh, Ms. Abrams, and then I'll have an update for you uh, for next week. If there's any um, you know, hold up in that, it would potentially need to be pushed back to next month. But my intent at this point is to have this ready for the next regular meeting um, for your consideration. Thank you. Any questions? Mrs. Smith, during, I'm not going to ask tonight because I know we're going to go through it again, but um, I think one of the things that might be a question is um, how this is beneficial to our district. If you could just talk about a few of the, the uh, you know, the, the pride and, and the touching base with the employees and some of those other positive aspects that come from this. and. Um, why this is important to us and, and why we're doing this again and in the feedback and, and just some of the intangibles that yeah. are that we get from from doing this and that it's there is a purpose to it. There is um, definitely a lot of um, positive feedback that we've gotten from staff. I think the number one thing um, it's just that sense of appreciation, you know, for our employees to feel that the district appreciates you, we value you, we want to provide you something um, nice to wear, and again, that we see it um, being worn is wonderful. Um, I've seen too just the research that shows with the um, having branded apparel uh, seems to bring a sense of unity in that team uh, vibe, which uh, I think plays right into our climate and culture work. Of course, we're trying to create a positive culture in our building, and I think. Um, having these pieces of payroll adds to that. Um, so, yeah, very, I'll turn it over in case Ms. Oquist has anything to add, but. You covered it well? Yep, thank you. Um, okay, are we all set with the side on? Okay. Uh, then Vice President Johnson, um, that concludes finance for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bonifield. And that brings us to item six, our policy committee. And uh, we're going to hear from Mr. Willenberg tonight on our policy JD student code of conduct that he has worked so diligently on. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I'm excited to be back here to talk about Policy JD. Um, we started a conversation two, year, two years ago, two, uh, <laughs> uh, two weeks ago with the board. Uh, You've been on but, it, but we've been working on it for several years. You're right. And uh, I emphasize at the beginning of the year, uh, I put, we put together a, a committee of administrators uh, 
at both levels, elementary and secondary. Uh, particularly like to recognize Lindsay Rousseau, and Brian Jenkins, Deb Dykstra, Nicole Hunter, Tara Woodruff, and Eric Stromberg, uh, who sat on that committee and spent hours and hours reviewing our current policy JD. And um, we thought maybe it's gonna be a revision. It ended up being more of a rewrite. And you know, we started with, as I explained last, last time, that we started with the title. I mean, it was called Student Discipline. And we wanted to make sure it was renamed to something that's often referred to in, in um, uh, legal literature as a student code of conduct. So that was our first, uh, first push was that to rename that policy. I met, met with Mr. Johnson back in um, October you know, to go over some of these things. We, we looked at uh, our, all of our policies in the J category, the students category, and we, we felt there was four policies that we could move in right into the student code of conduct. So I recommended, uh, we recommended that we eliminate or eliminate them as a standalone policy, but absorb them into our new student code of conduct. And that's what we've done in, in our new policy as well. Um, um, you know, so for the, probably the major section of uh, the student code of conduct is listed as prohibited acts. And our old policy listed 24, we're up to 33, and we have two tiers. Uh, there's a, uh, our normal tier, but then we wanted to emphasize that some of these uh, prohibit, prohibited acts you know, are, are, are generally going to land you in some hot water in terms of a disciplinary hearing. It's just, you know, generally a suspension that could be for more than 10 days. You know, possibly legal implications as well. Um, you know, so we called those major offenses. You know, so our prohibited acts were divided into, you know, some our regular offenses and then some uh, major offenses. Uh, another. When we met last uh, two weeks ago, remember we laid out what the old section was, what the new section is. We went through five separate sections. Like I said, one was introduction, one was prohibitive acts, one was due process, and that just spells out, you know, the rights of the students, you know, involved in, in, in involved in disciplinary here, involved in any disciplinary uh, dealings, you know, that the that the administrator. You know, we'll ask them for their side of the story. You know, we're not randomly pulling people out of the hallway and uh, assigning them consequences for something they didn't do. They get to share their side of the story. Um, and a principal can, you know, suspend a student up to 10 days, uh, for, for 10 days or less, you know, uh, with on based on their sole discretion. You know, the law does uh, require if it's a more than 10 days, you know, it's a more formal process, and that's what we know as a disciplinary hearing um, that you know involves central office uh, a bit more. And uh, we set up a hearing with a with an impartial hearing officer. You know, describe uh, student rights in the hearing process, um, and it could lead to a suspension of, like I said, more than ten days. Um, um, you know, so those were the different sections. Those were the different sections we went over. Um, in the in the policy that was shared in your packet this week, I did. If you go through that, uh, the orange markings are the edits and corrections that you suggested, you know, from that meeting of March seventh. And there was about eight or nine different things that you had pointed out. They all were very valuable, and I think enhanced, you know, this revised policy. So I hope you had a chance to look at those, and it captures what you were you know, what you were pointing out. Uh, also had further discussion with our district attorney, uh, our district um, um, legal, counsel. legal counsel, that's a better word, uh, better phrase, uh, you know, regarding uh, particularly uh, the sexual assault and criminal sexual conduct. And, and our concern was that it just needed a topic sentence that was a little better than what we had. And so I, I've passed that around, uh, that yellow mm -hmm. highlighted area is just the addition and, and a, Another addition that we have in the in the in the revised policy. The only suggestion I would add is: Do we need to add um, or other school activity in case, for instance, it's a, a field trip, a you know trip to 
Washington, D.C. or an off-site. Sure. Um, because it says school building or school, school property, property or school or activity. Event mm -hmm. Or sponsored mm -hmm. event or school organized event. Yeah, that's I can certainly add that, uh, revise that, make that edit uh, for our for the next uh, next board meeting. Any other questions that you may have or recommendations that you may have? Any other questions? Mrs. Bannerfield. So, thank you. Um, with the addition, in, in any school building or school property, is there any way we can consolidate that and maybe say, now that we're talking about it being inclusive you know is would or maybe it's just the the definition but i mean like would central office be considered a school building or does that lead us to think that can we say anything like in or on any school property or am i just going a little too far with it well currently it's uh it stated in any school building or school property, we we I guess we that would include, well, include well, central office, right? Any of those um, fields we have, yeah, that's right. yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. school property, and, All right. but we'll add uh, you know or yeah. school, school organized events, events. Yeah. okay, school activities, any school activity. Any other questions? I, again, I want to uh, thank Mr. Willenberg and his team for the immense amount of work that went into uh, writing this. Um, if you saw last week the, the amount of material that was reviewed um, just to get this document in its present form uh, was a, a monumental undertaking. So again, thank you uh, for all the work that you that you did. Thank you, and I want to emphasize a review through the MD, Michigan Department of Education model policy, the Miller Johnson uh, model policy, you know, journals of Michigan compiled laws, journals, and the like. So it was a quite a, it's been quite an exciting and educational journey. It's, it really yeah. is. This will serve us well. This will go on for our first reading. Yes, for first I would include this policy JD for a first reading at the voting meeting of April 4th. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Willenberg. Uh, that'll end uh, policy. That'll take us to item seven, personnel committee. Mrs. Bradford. Uh, we do not have anything at this time. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. You're take welcome. Us to item eight, our legislative committee, and Mrs. Jarvis. We don't have anything at this time. Outstanding. So that brings us to uh, the end of our agenda this evening. So as long as there is nothing else to be brought before, we'll say good evening and see you at the regular meeting. Good night. Thank you.